Zena's online. I see Amariah Israel. Shalom, shalom. Shalom, family. Shalom, shalom. All praises. Yeah. Uh, but before we get there, I do want to, um, before we read it, I want to show the video. Uh, obviously, uh, well, <laughs> Zedediah, soldier. I want to open up with the video. Can we put it up on the screen so everybody can see it? Sister got their screen over here. Brother I can't see nothing here. I want everybody to take a look. This is the devil right here, Nicholas Cruz. Don't play it yet. Just put it on pause. Put it on pause. Jedediah, put it on pause. It's still going, Jedediah. Put it on pause. Go back. Please just go back to the beginning. Pull it back. Thank you. Blow, put, put the screen log. Yeah. All right. This is the devil, uh, Nicholas Cruz. <coughs> and uh, he's the one that was just arrested for killing, I believe, it was 17 students. Um, now, he was arrested, and I found it very odd because, you know, if it was a black guy, he would not have been arrested. He would have been killed. Right. Uh, assassinated. I mean, immediately killed. Murdered. Uh, but because he is so-called Edomite, he was arrested. They probably took him to McDonald's and Burger King, <laughs> like they did the last guy that went into the church. Okay. So, Jedediah, let's roll a video. It's not that long. Right now, is the volume up so we can hear? Okay. Let's take a look. All right. Nicholas Cruz. Read that. Florida white supremacist group admits ties to alleged Parkland school shooter Nicholas Cruz. February 15th. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. A spokesperson for the white supremacist group Republic of Florida told the Anti Defamation League on Thursday. It went kind of fast. Yeah, Go it back. went kind of fast. Scroll back a little bit. Scroll back. Scroll back. Go back a little bit more. A little bit more. All right, pause it. Pause it, right. A spokesperson for the white supremacist group Republic of Florida told the Anti-Defamation League on Thursday, February 15th, that Nicholas Cruz, the man charged with the previous day's deadly shooting spree at a Parkland, Florida high school. Play High school was associated with his group. On Wednesday, February 14th, Cruz, 19, a former student at Majority Stoneman Douglas High School, allegedly entered the school with an AR-15 and opened fire. Holy shit. Holy shit. Oh my god. Oh my god. Holy shit. Holy shit! Oh my god! Oh my god! other videos that they had that they took down that showed dead bodies everywhere. Now, this was uh, uh, several months ago. It was a hearing with the head of the FBI, just Jeff Sessions, because the FBI created the black identity extremists, right. where they're targeting black people 
who allegedly are going against police. Now watch what the congresswoman is asking Jeff Sessions. That's him with the white hair. Now I want you to keep in mind what Nicholas Cruz just did in conjunction to what the FBI has now has recently set up. Play the video. In 1971, the FBI ran a counterintelligence program named COINTELPRO that was initiated by J. Edgar Hoover. COINTELPRO mainly targeted civil rights leaders such as Martin Luther King, and it's commonly understood that this was an abuse of its surveillance power in a manner to suppress a peaceful movement. So uh, I would like to ask Mr. Chair unanimous consent to enter this report into the record, which is black identity extremists likely motivated to target law enforcement officers. I believe earlier you said you were not familiar with the report, is that correct? Well, I haven't read it. I know um, some of the alleged uh, targeting of, of officers uh, by a Okay, so a I, I would group. like to know, and I'll ask you about that in a minute. So you um, are somewhat familiar with it. Who had the power in your department to order a report like this? I'm not sure how that report got ordered. I don't believe I explicitly uh, approved it. Or they always lie. I don't know why they have these meetings. Everybody that goes there says, I don't recall, I don't know. This is a waste of tax people's money. Because they lie. Every, every, every time you ask them a question, it comes a lie. Go ahead. Directed it. Okay, so uh, you're not, you haven't necessarily read the report, but you are familiar with the term black identity extremists? Well, I think so, yes. So could you tell me what that term means to you? Do you believe that there is a movement of African Americans that identify themselves as black identity extremists? And what does that movement do? Well, I'd, I'd be interesting to see the conclusions of that report. But I'm aware uh, that there are groups that uh, do have an extraordinary commitment to their um, racial identity. And some have transformed themselves even into violent activists. So, Are you aware of white uh, organizations that do this as well? Given indeed. that white supremacy is well-documented, well-researched movements such as the neo-Nazis, the Ku Klux Klan, et cetera, are they white identity extremists? I, I didn't follow that question, please, again. Um, is there a term or a report on white identity extremists? You mentioned you were familiar with black people who identify with their racial identity. Yes. But it's not coming to me at this moment. <laughs> not coming to you? Stop. Uh, Man, it's, uh, with the lies. With, they always lie. You can never take what these people say at face value. These are some, this is a lying race of people. Go ahead. Um, Certainly a group such as the Ku Klux Klan. Yes. The and then the skinhead movements. But there's a racial identity, white movements uh, that have been identified for sure. So has the FBI done a report on white identity extremists that are likely motivated to target law enforcement officers? Um, Is there I'm not aware point? of that. Okay. Uh, are you aware of a group called the Sovereign Citizens? I've heard that group, yes. And I believe that the Sovereign Citizens is primarily a white organization that absolutely has targeted police officers and killed police officers. You're not aware of that? I'm not aware of all their crimes, but I know they are a group that's uh, uh, known to have violent tendencies. Could you name an African-American organization that have committed violent acts against police officers? Could you name one today? In this report, they name organizations from 30, 40 years ago, but can you name of one today that has targeted uh, police officers in a violent manner? I believe I could, but I would want to be uh, to confirm uh, that and submit it to you in writing. But I believe we had within the last year or so, four police officers killed by a group that some have described as uh, extremists. So what has happened is, is that there have been a couple of incidents in which African Americans did kill police officers who were not associated with a black organization. And so one, for example, in Baton Rouge was associated with sovereign citizens, which is primarily a white group. So you should know that there's a lot of concern in the community, especially from organizations such as Black Lives Matter. By the way, would you consider Black Lives Matter a, a black identity extremist group? Um, I'm not able to comment on that. I'm not, a, I have not so declared it. So you should know that a lot of activists around the country are very concerned that we're getting ready to repeat 
a very uh, sad chapter of our history where people who are rightfully protesting what they consider to be an injustice in their community, which is their uh, relationship uh, with police officers, are now being targeted and labeled as extremists and are going through periods of surveillance and harassment. And so I would like to know, what is your department going to do to protect the rights of average citizens to protest if they have a concern about police officers? This department will not unlawfully target people. So if that's the case, then I would ask that you review this report, Black Identity, Identity Extremists Likely Motivated to Target Law Enforcement Officers, because I personally don't believe that any such organizations exist. The organizations that are referred to in this report uh, are organizations from decades ago. And so I would like to know what will you do to essentially roll back what is listed in this report, because it's not accurate. I will, we will look at the report. I actually um, would be interested in reading it. But they usually do an excellent job, objective and fair, on those kind of reports. Okay, well, just... Time of the, time of the gentlewoman has expired. The Bunch of daggone liars, all of them. Every last one of them. Now, like Miss Bass caught him up in his lie, there have been a few, I think maybe two or three cases where there was a black one, an individual who targeted police, but the individual was a talk was uh, associated with a white group that did that. And the other groups listed in this black identity extremist list is like the Panthers from like 40 years ago, when whites were doing uh, horrible crimes against black people and the Panthers stood up in our defense. Y'all, some of you young ones may not be familiar with that. The older ones should know, some of the older sisters as well. Now. Give me a uh, Psalms 58 chapter, please. These people, these people. So they want to, they're, they're creating, and to, oh, they have, as a matter of fact, they did arrest one black man under this thing who had a gun in his house. He wasn't doing anything. He had a firearm in his house that was not registered. And they said, oh, he's a black identity extremist. What the hell is this? He had a firearm in his house that was not registered, so that made him a black identity extremist. These people are wicked as hell, but it's going to grow. This evil that they're perpetrating is going to grow. I'm going to show us that in the scriptures. Read that. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 58, and verse 3. The wicked are estranged from the womb. The wicked. When it says the wicked, who is it talking about? Right here, young man right here. When the Bible talks about the wicked, who is it talking about? I'm pointing to you. Yes. Hey, long brother Jash, brother uh, Jashup. Yes, sir. Okay, who's it talking? Talking about Esau. How do you know? Uh, Job nine twenty four says Esau. I'm not sure, sir. Okay, let's try again over here. Who is the wicked making reference to? Malachi. Uh, I want him to answer. Shalom, Bishop. Uh, Shalom. What's your name? Brother Ananias. Brother Ananias. So who's the wicked? I know the wicked is. Uh, you know you got black people that's wicked, right? Yeah. You didn't know that? He said, "Yeah." You know every race got wicked people in it. You right. know that? Yes, sir. Okay. So who is Psalms fifty-eight talking about? It says the wicked are estranged from the womb, speaking lies. Who's that? How about the brother in front of you? I'm not actually sure, but I believe um, in Deuteronomy 32 and 31, it talks about the um, the enemies being um, Sodom and Gomorrah. Let's try over here. Let's try over here. Shalom, Bishop. Shalom. What's your name? Brother Simon. Brother Simon. So who is the wicked of Psalm 58, verse 3 that we discussed here? Uh, Esau in uh, the book of Malachi chapter 1 verse 4. Let's read that. This is the book of... Hey, let's say my, my mic is low. Give me this. Give me this. Hey, how's this mic? Is this mic a little better? Okay. This is the book of Malachi chapter 1 and verse 4. Uh-huh. Whereas Edom saith, 
Whereas Edom, Edom is a so-called white man. Now watch this. There's a devil online that just said uh, we was Kangs. W-U-Z-K-A-N-G-Z. -W See, devil, let me tell you something. Uh, what's his name? Big White? Big Wild? We are kings. That's right. Uh, we are kings. And Jesus Christ is black, and you are the devil, the Bible speaks of. That's right. You can write, write a check on that thing right there. Go ahead. Read that again. Malachi chapter 1, verse 4. Whereas Edom saith, we are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Stop. Right here again. I'm going back to you, brother. What's your name again? What's your name again? Brother Simon. Brother Simon. So, Brother Simon, so that I know you understand the scripture that you pulled. Uh, whereas Edom saith, we are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Explain that. When were they impoverished? Uh, so, uh, they, were, they were impoverished during the Dark Ages. Very good. People are saying the volume is extremely low. Not here. On our mic, on whatever y'all doing through the system. He said, somebody said you don't need a mic. Wow. You, need a, you always need a mic. Always need a mic. Okay. Let's give me a few minutes. They they checking the sound. They checking the sound. Okay, somebody said better. Okay, I'll put it. All right. Uh start again. You said Esau was impoverished when? During the Dark Ages. During the Dark Ages. It says, but we will return. When was that? Uh during the Renaissance. The Renaissance. Very good. Read it again for us. Very good. Whereas Edom saith, we are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, they shall build, but I will throw down. They will build, but I will throw down. So from the time of the Renaissance on up until today, Esau, the so-called white man, has been building. Go ahead. And they shall call them the border of wickedness. And they shall call them, the so-called white man, Edom, the border of of wickedness. That's the beginning and end of all wickedness. Go ahead. And the people. And the people. You want to stress that when y'all teach. Because some people are saying, talking about Esau, the individual. But no. Edom is talking about the people, male and female, old and young. It says what? And the people against whom the Lord hath indignation forever. What does that word indignation break down to? In the context, when we use that word, in the context of what we are reading, what does indignation mean? Keep it in, co in its cultural context. Hate. What'd you say? Uh, hatred. Yes, hatred. Because read that top part again. Whereas Edom say it. Nope. I'm above it too. Verse 2. I have loved you, saith the Lord. Yet ye say, wherein hast thou loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother? Saith the Lord. Yet I loved Jacob, and I hated Esau. That's the context. And I hated Esau. So when it talks about, and the people against whom the Lord has indignation against forever, is dealing with hatred. Forever, forever, ever? Yes, so all you Edomite lovers out there, might be some of you Edomite lovers online, God hates them forever. Understand that thing. So now, when we go back to Psalms 58 chapter, we want to go back there. We want to go back. Psalm chapter 50. And listen, let me explain something. I want oh, brothers listen good to what I'm sisters saying. Listen to what I'm saying. What we are saying is not based on any personal grudge that we have. You know why I want to stress that? Because the majority of us up in here grew up Christian. We grew up loving white folks. We gave them a pass on all the evil they done did. We had white Jesus on the wall. I know my mama did. White Jesus on the wall with white, what's that dude's name, the president in the 60s? JFK with Martin Luther King on the side. We love them to death. But now upon reading the scriptures, we realize, hey, God hates these people forever. He says he hates them. He don't like them too much. So what we're saying is based on the Bible, not on a personal grudge, no Esau never tried to lynch me. He never did something to me personally 
Because people go, did he ever do, did the white people ever do something to you personally? You, you, you took, not try, years ago, you, no. But guess what? I know what the Bible says. I'm going to tell you what God says. And my thoughts is God's thoughts. Or God's thoughts, well, how should I, it does say it right? Yeah, the way I'm speaking is what God is saying. Everybody understand that? Okay, for you eat my lovers out there. Hey, don't block the devil. Let the, de let the devil run his mouth on there. Did you block him? Just leave him alone. Okay, you didn't block him. Look, look, look. The, the next devil says, wow, much hatred here. <laughs> See, that's what I'm talking about. These, no matter any T, this is why they don't like talking about black history. When you talk about black history, it also reveals white history. And what I mean by that, when you all the atrocities done to us, somebody did it to us. And it's always going to point towards white folks. Always. So read that again. Psalms 58. Let's go back. Psalms chapter 58 and verse 3. The wicked are estranged from the womb. The wicked, meaning the white man and woman, are estranged from the womb. Go ahead. They go astray as soon as they be born, speaking lies. So God says when they're babies. They speak in lies. So when you hear the baby crying, wah, they lying. <laughs> that little white baby's lying. That's what the Bible is saying. That baby, that's a devil right there is lying. As soon as it's trying to speak a lie. Go ahead. Verse 4. Their poison is like the poison of a serpent. When it talks about their poison, it's talking about their philosophies. Give me that in Colossians 2 and 8 real quick. But let no man deceive you. Colossians chapter 2 and verse 8. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. After the tradition of man, after the rudiments of the world. When it says after the tradition of man today, it's talking about after the tradition of the so-called white man. Because he is the dominant factor in the earth. He's the dominant devil in the earth. So that's what the Bible is talking Did you finish the verse? And not after Christ. None of the philosophies set up in this world are after Christ. Including Christianity. Let me say it again. Including Christianity. Christianity is a doctrine of devils. Christianity is a philosophy of men. Christianity is after the rudiments of the world. After the traditions of men. Let's go back to Psalms now. Psalm 58, please. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 58 and verse 3. The wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they be born, speaking lies. Their poison is like the poison of a serpent. They are like the deaf adder that stoppeth her ear. And let me show you something with that. Give me the precept in Habakkuk 2, verse, it might be verse 3. Because I know, sisters, some, some of you sisters online, some of you sisters online, you think you can tame this devil. You think that you're, you're, let me see some I see children here. You think that you're, you're, give me some words so I don't say the wrong thing. They think that they're, that they can change this devil. If I give him all the loving in the world, I can surely change this serpent. Read Habakkuk 2. What verse do I want? Is it 4? This is the book of Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him. The Bible says his soul which is lifted up in him is not upright in him. Lifted up how? His soul is lifted up as God, Christ, the angels, and the Israelites. He is the all in all in his mind. He is the great I am in his dilapidated mind. So now when we go back to Psalms, the 58th chapter, verse 3, once again. Psalms, chapter 58 and verse 3. Let's, can we start at verse 2? Verse 2. Yea, in heart ye work wickedness. This devil works wickedness. Go ahead. Ye weigh the violence of your hands in the earth. Look at the violence the white man has committed throughout the earth. It is beyond compare when you exam when you put them in comparison with other races. Go ahead. Verse 3. The wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as, the as soon as they be born, speaking lies. Uh -huh. Their poison is like the poison of a serpent. They are like... When the it says their poison is like the poison of a serpent... What does that mean? Their poison is like the poison of a serpent. Uh, let me over here in the back. Brother in the back, look up, look at me. I'm talking to you. Yeah, you stand up. I want to hear your answer. When it says their poison is like the poison of a serpent, 
First off, so I know you're paying attention, what is their poison? The evil. Huh? Um, the evil that they do in throughout the earth. Okay, something else. Yeah, you're right, but be more specific. Their, um, like the crime that was committed yesterday. Okay, something else. Get a mic to the brother next to you with the, uh, yeah. What's your name, young man? Shalom. This is Brother Mark. Brother Mark, stand up for me. Oh, okay. I apologize. So, what is their poison? Um, the poison is the wickedness. Okay. Like, remember we went to Colossians 2 and 8? What were we talking about in Colossians 2 verse 8? Um, the philosophy. Right. Like, give me an example of some of their philosophies. Um, or one of their major philosophies. Uh, Jesus is white. Right, Christianity, right? Christianity. Okay. So when it said, when the Bible says their poison is like their poison is like the poison of a serpent, what does their philosophies do for us? Mm. Think brings about us, it. Brings us away from the truth. More than that, something else. Y'all not getting it. Their poison or their philosophy is like the poison of a serpent. If you get oh, bit by a snake, what? It kills us. Yes, it will kill us. By accepting their Christianity, their democracy, whatever philosophies they got, the Lord said, if y'all take hold of that, it's going to kill you. In the end, it's death for us. Everybody understand that? Yes, sir. Okay, let's go back there again. Where you at? Psalms 58 and 4. Go ahead. Their poison is like the poison of a serpent. They are like the deaf adder that stoppeth her ear. What does that mean? What does that mean? Right here in the front, Big David. Officer David, it says they are like the deaf adder that stoppeth her ear. Explain that. I'm not 100% sure. So. Okay. Who, who want to take a stab at that thing? Now, remember, it's talking about the so-called white man. It's comparing him to a serpent. It's comparing his philosophy to the poison that's in its mouth. And it's telling us like snakes, the adder's deaf, it can't hear nothing. It says, they are like the deaf adder that stoppeth her ear. Just think about it. Why, did it, why, why is the white man like a, a deaf snake with their philosophies, their poisons? Um, what are they stopping their ears to? You know what it means to stop their ears? They don't want to hear nothing. So what? they don't want to hear the laws of God. Right. They don't want to hear the laws of God. They don't want to hear you complain. They don't want to hear. They ain't, they ain't hearing nothing that we say as a people. Right. Like when you look at AA over here. Do me a favor. Type up uh, civil rights movement and images. Civil rights images. Let me show you. Civil rights. Just put in civil rights. Let me see what pop up. Put it on the screen so we can all see too. Put on the screen. Okay, okay, okay. Blow it up big. I want some. You see that picture? Uh, give me the top. Give me the second one. Give me the second one right there. No, go to the first. Let's let's go back. Go back out. Go back out. Hit the first one. Now our people would go into the restaurants to sit down and eat and get bust upside the head for years. You and we was crying to the white man, why can't we sit in these restaurants? They are public. And they would tell us that we are three-fifths of a man. You mean they wasn't they wasn't listening to nothing we had to say. They were like the deaf adder that stopped their ears. Go to the next picture. Our children in their schools, okay? They would throw bottles at our children. You mean they didn't have a conscience to say? Hey, what we're doing is not right. That's what God means when he says they are like the deaf adder that stoppeth her ear. Go to the next picture. Give me that one. Yeah. They was, uh, um, where happened to the picture? What, what's going on? There? Go, yeah, just leave it right there. Sicking dogs on us. Now, the man's not putting up a fight. They didn't give a hoot. Just that fact that he was black and they didn't have a conscience to say. This isn't right. You're sicking on a, a dog 
on a defenseless man. And he did it to the women too. Go back out. They wasn't listening to nothing we said. Um, give me some, go to go up and type in. Just click the word images. See images. Click that. Now go down. Go down. Let me just see. Uh, okay, you got Jim Crow must go. Go down. Go down. Go down. We shall overcome. All of this crying in the streets. Give my mom a job. Go down. Go, and, and look. Go down. Right there, click that. We had to walk around with signs to tell them, I am a man. You mean they didn't know we were men? That's what God is saying. They are like the deaf adder that stoppeth her ear. And Stokey Carmichael made a, a statement about Martin Luther King. He said, Martin Luther King made one, one major mistake, believing and thinking the white man had a conscience. He said, this man has no conscience. They were killing men women and children indiscriminately sicking dogs on babies they didn't care okay and you might say well they changed now brother they're not like that's not true we just saw a video with the little devil going in school in school shooting down people that's why we need our own school get away from them that's why we need the home school get away from them okay so let's go back now to psalms 58 so they are like the deaf adder that stoppeth her ear. They don't hear righteousness. They don't hear the truth. No matter what you say, they're not hearing it. Bishop, remember the video we just watched? The sister asked, what uh, black identity extremists are today? Because in the report, he had identity extremists from 30, 40 years ago. When she asked that question, he acted like he didn't hear it. There you go. That's what they do. That's what they always do. What verse we at? Verse 4. Uh -huh. Their poison is like the poison of a serpent. Meaning their philosophy is like the poison of a serpent. It will kill you. Go ahead. They are like the deaf adder that stoppeth her ear. They're like deaf adders that stop. They make like they didn't hear what you just said. They don't hear nothing we say when it comes to righteousness and truth. They don't hear it. That's why when we were at the college, I always tell people, when we do these events at these colleges, they got all these student unions. You got the black student union. You had the Chinese student union. You had the Jewish student union. You had the Irish student union. But in the black student union, you got whites peppered throughout the audience. And they're not there because they love us. They're there to monitor us. Just like on Periscope now, you got the devil up. What? Hey, this is for black people, black and Latin people. Why are they in our class? It's not that they love us. They always monitor, oh, he's not teaching. And because we don't push white supremacy, they go, oh, they're teaching hatred. They're not teaching that Jesus loves everybody and Jesus is white. They're filled with hatred. That's, what, that's how they interpret things. Their soul, which is lifted up in them, is not upright in them. Read that again. Verse 4, their poison is like the poison of a serpent. They are like the deaf adder that stoppeth her ear which will not hearken to the voice of charmers, charming never so wisely. Which will not hearken to the voice of charmers. You know what the voice of charmers is? We shall overcome. You want to mesmerize the white man with your dumb lyrics? They're not listening. You want to go out there and, and march, Black Lives Matter. Black Lives They don't care about that. Give me that. Type that up for me, uh, Jedediah. Black Lives Matter. They don't care about that. Type it in. So that's what it goes into, which will not hearken to the voice of charmers. You trying to charm the white man with all your, uh, 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 your images, images. I want images with a street image. Look at the sign. When that got the white woman holding that crap up. Go down, go down. Okay, right there. Give, you're right on the left. Right there, right there. Give me that. I got to see the Negro doing it. That, that, that. Look, you're always getting the devil in the background. Oh, gosh. And the majority of them is LGBT anyway. Madness. Straight up madness. Okay. So, it says, uh, which will not hearken to the voice of charmers. So, regardless of all this marching, black lives matter. We shall overcome. I am a man. Civil rights for all. All of that crap. They're not listening. Hey, you know what I want you to do, Jedediah? Type in voters' rights. Act 1965. Voters, it might be voters, is it voters registration or voters right act? Voters right act. Let me see that.
Um, go down for me. Go down. I, no, 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 no. I want to Wikipedia. Click it, I meant. I meant. Click it. Black people, my people, my people. I read that first line for us. The Voting Rights Act of 1965 is a landmark piece of federal legislation in the United States that prohibits racial discrimination and voting. Now, that sounds good. That prohibits racial discrimination and voting. Now, go down. Go down. I want you to go all the way down. I, I believe it's all the way near the bottom is, is what I want. Back, go ahead. Wait, 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 wait. It's good. Don't go too fast. Go down. Go down. Y'all bear with me. I just want to see a certain thing in here. In here. Keep going. Keep going. If y'all see uh, years in here, keep going. Keep going. Bear with me. Stop. Pause. 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 Uh, bear with me a second. Go down some more. Okay, what was right there? Let me look. I got to get up closer. You're not going to have C. Uh, go down. Y'all bear with me a second. I just want to show y'all this thing. I showed it to y'all before. It's been a while. It's been a while. Keep going. Not too fast. Not too fast. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go down. Let's pause. Let me see something. Go ahead, go down. Stop. Bear with me a second. Bear with me, bear with me. Let me know if y'all see dates. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, keep going. Okay, I think, the, oh, here it goes. Here it go. amendments. Go down. Read this for us. Congress, the amendments, that's what I wanted. Go ahead. Congress enacted major amendments to the act in 1970. 1975, 1982, 1992, and 2006. Each amendment coincided with an impending expiration of some or all of the act's special provisions. So the act's special provisions allowed us to vote. In every of these years, our voting rights expired. They had to reenact and enforce it. Keep reading originally set to expire by 1970. That's what I was saying. Our voting rights expire in the United States of America. But I thought we were citizens. I thought we all had equal rights. That's a farce. Go ahead. Congress repeatedly reauthorized the special provisions in recognition of continuing voting discrimination. Go ahead. Congress extended the coverage formula and special provisions tied to it, such as the Section 5, Preclearance requirement for five years in 1970. So in 1970, they extended our voting rights for five years. Go ahead. Seven years in 1975 and 25 years in both 1982 and 2006. In 1970 and 1975, Congress also expanded the reach of the coverage formula by supplementing it with new 1968 and 1972 trigger dates. Coverage was further enlarged in 1975 when Congress expanded the meaning of test or devices. Because remember, they, according to their law, we were supposed to take a test to see if we had the right to vote. A test of literacy. So they have to keep extending our rights over and over. The last date was 2006 they extended our vote voting rights. But all these black uh, congressmen, black men and women, they never talk about that. They don't bring that up. They just run the Congress. Please extend our voting rights some more, Mr. White Man. Please, please, Mr. White Man. We love you. This is why we got to get out of here. Right. We have to get out of here. Where we at now? Psalms 58 and verse 6. We're going to read 5 again. Verse 5. Which will not hearken to the voice of charmers. Charming never so wisely. Charming never so wisely. Go ahead. Break their teeth, O oh God. So this is the prayer of... Uh, who made this one? This was the chief musician. I can't see the name. Al Tashif. Okay. So in this song, he asking God to break the teeth of the devil. Break the teeth out of the mouth of the so-called white man. Smash their teeth. Shut them down. Read that again. Verse 6. Break their teeth, O God, in their mouth. Break out the great 
teeth of the young lions, O Lord. Go ahead. Let them melt away as waters, which run continually when he bendeth his bow to shoot his arrows. Let them be as cut in pieces. So he's saying, kill them. How come nobody in church sings these songs? Right. That's why all these gospel singers, they make up their own song. They don't read the songs in the Bible. They say, no, 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 that's, that's too harsh. It might offend a slave master. Let's write our own songs. This is why, give me that Amos 5, 23. That's why the Lord don't want to hear your, your songs. Because your songs in your Christian churches are garbage. Let me say it again. Your songs in your Christian churches are garbage. Because they don't glorify the Lord Almighty, what he says or stands for. Read that. Amos chapter 5 and verse 23. Take thou away from me the noise of thy song. Here's what the Lord is saying to black people, black and Latin people. He says, Take thou away from me the noise of your songs. Right? For I will not hear the melody of thy vials. You know why? Because we were mixing the songs of God with idolatry. Right. Now you might say, We don't do that. Oh, you better believe we do that today. We do that every Sunday. Our people in their songs is sing songs of Christianity, which is nothing but democracy. Songs of Christianity, let me say it again, is nothing but democracy. What do I mean by that? Give me that first Maccabees chapter one. First Maccabees. I'm gonna show you. And and, and in the Bible, democracy is called a religion. Watch this. You know what I want? First Maccabees 1 verse 41, I believe it is. Yes, sir. First Maccabees chapter 4 and 1 and verse 41. Say it again. Where are we going? First Maccabees chapter 1 and verse 41. Moreover, King Antiochus wrote to his whole kingdom that all should be one people. You see that? King Antiochus, king of the Greeks, of the Seleucus Empire, he wrote to all his kingdom that all should be one people. Now, doesn't that sound like the United States of America? You better believe that's what democracy is talking about, that all should be one people. Go ahead. And everyone should leave his laws. So all the heathen agreed. So all the heathen, meaning all the other nations agreed. The Chinese agreed. Africans agreed. The Arabs agreed. East Indians agreed. Go ahead. According to the commandment of the king. Read. Yea. Many also of the Israelites. And you had Israelites that did what? Consented to his religion. You see that word religion right there? What we started reading is going into what we would call democracy. God is saying it's a religion. So when you look at Christianity, doesn't Christianity say that we're all one in Jesus? That's what they say. It's a religion. Christianity is nothing more than democracy. They're saying the same thing. We're all one people in white man Jesus. Read. Yea, many also of the Israelites consented to his religion and sacrificed unto idols and profaned the Sabbath. You mean to tell me that you don't know that we sacrifice to idols in Christianity? Go throughout these black churches. You'll see white images, false images everywhere. And after Sunday school, because I remember, so ain't nobody going to lie to me. After Sunday school, church service would go by. They'd have a food fest. We all go downstairs and eat pork, right. chitlins, right. collard greens, peppered and flavored with pork. Mm -hmm. And you got a big cross right there on the wall. Sacrificing to idols. Go ahead. For the king had sent letters by messengers unto Jerusalem and the cities of Judah that they should follow the strange laws of the land. That we should follow the strange laws of the land. Christianity democracy go ahead and forbid burnt offerings forbid burnt offerings and sacrifice and sacrifice and drink offerings and drink offerings in the temple in the temple and that they should profane the sabbaths and festival days don't we profane the sabbath and festival days in christianity you better believe we do in christianity they have changed the sabbath to the first day of the week right in christianity they have changed all god's holidays to observe fourth of july Mother's Day, Christmas, New Year's Eve, they've changed all of God's festival days. So that's how we profane them today in the church. Go ahead. Verse 46, and pollute the sanctuary and holy people. Set up altars and groves and chapels of idols. That means churches. 
Go ahead. And sacrifice swine's flesh. Don't we sacrifice swine's flesh in these churches? Because that's what we eating. And these Christian churches, we all eating pork, shrimp, crab, all kind of uncleanness. Go ahead. And unclean beast. That they should also what live. unclean beast? Raccoon, possum. When I'm down south in church, if possum stew, raccoon meat, that's what they be eating. Turtle stew and all this stuff. Talk about tastes like chicken. Go ahead. Verse 48. That they should also leave their children uncircumcised. And there's a new thing going through. They're pushing right. and saying that right. circumcision is barbaric. Right. That's what they're trying to push. Go ahead. And make their souls abominable with all manner of uncleanness. We've made our souls abominable with all manner of uncleanness. And profanation. And profanation. To the end that they might forget the law. To the end, the purpose of democracy, the purpose of Christianity, this white man's religion, is that we will forget God's laws. That's what it means when it says to the, what, read that part again. All manner of uncleanness and profanation. To the end, they might forget the law. Not any law, but God's law. That we might forget God's law. That's what the purpose of Christianity and democracy is all about. Go ahead. And change all the ordinances. And change all the ordinances of God. Go ahead. And whosoever would not do according to the commandment of the king, he said he should die. And that's what they did. That's how they got millions of black people in the Christian religion. Because they was murdering us during the time of chattel slavery. That's what they was doing to us. Killing us if we did not accept white Jesus. That's what happened to us. Did you finish that? Go yes, back sir. To, uh, Psalms. Now, give me, I want the next video. Because some of our sisters, some of us, give me that Isaiah 32. Rise of you women. To kill. Stop, oh. stop. Give me Isaiah 32. Isaiah, the 32nd chapter. Let me look. Verse 9. Now, let me start by saying, let's start at verse 5. For your, you democratic Christians out there, you claim that you are, and go back to the beginning of the video, because I already see it's not at the beginning. I want to show this, before we show the video, I just want to read this thing, because many of our sisters, not all, but some of you, some of you might be online, you want to be a feminist. Or you have another sister who says she's a feminist. Some of our sisters are in the Black Lives Matter movement and they say they are feminists. I'm going to reveal to you tonight the agenda of the black, of the feminist movement, which was started by, what's her name? Standard, uh, that white lady. What's the white lady's name? No, I want to Gloria, is her name Gloria Steinem? I believe that's it. Gloria. Do me a favor. Type in Gloria Stein on, you, on Google. I want to make sure I got the name right. All right. Just bear with us. Gloria Stein. If I see, if I see her face, I, I know the devil when I see the devil. Put it on the screen so we can all see it. Yep, that's her right there. Gloria Steinem. She was a she was and I believe still is a member of the CIA. They used her to in, infiltrate black groups and pull the black woman. Uh, make a fight against a black man. So this devil right here, this devil, got in the black woman's ear and says, sister, we can do bad all by ourselves. We don't need the man because the man has done nothing but oppress us. Now the fight the white woman had, has had is not the black woman's fight because the black woman has always maintained jobs which were substantially better than black men. Even in terms of education, just they got the stats are out there. So for the white woman to whisper into the black woman's ear and get her to revolt against her black man, and we were in the struggle together. We were on the slave ships together. So for the black woman to listen to the white woman and fight us, <laughs> the most I'm gonna have a terrible death for you sisters that allow that. Now before we get, before we get to Isaiah 32, give me that about the woman. First Corinthians, second Corinthians chapter 11. As the serpent beguiled Eve. You know what I want? Yes, sir. Listen, sister. We, got, we were on the slave ships together. We were conquered together. We were sold together. Now you mean we ain't good enough for you? Our power was taken just like your power was taken. We were brought down and made slaves just like you. We're going to be delivered together. We shall be delivered together. 
you ain't going to go around this thing and be delivered. Like, remember Esther, Queen Esther thought, I ain't got to help y'all. Mordecai had to remind her, listen, <laughs> listen, what happens to us is going to happen to you too. Yeah, I'll, I'll find it. I'll find it. Bear with me a second. Bear with me. Yes. Okay, I'll bring it. This is the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 11, verse 3. But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtility. Stop right there. When you remember, the history on Genesis is a metaphor. Primary, and it's very difficult to understand. It is a metaphor. Don't think that there was a literal snake going, Eve. That wasn't happening. She would have screamed and ran down the street. It wasn't talking about a literal snake. Remember, and the proof is, what did we just read in Psalm 58? It said that the wicked is like what? A serpent. An adder, deaf adder with poison. It's comparing a race to a serpent. That's what Genesis is talking about. So now when we get here, let's, and now let's keep it in this cultural context. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3 again. But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtility. Think about it now. What did the serpent do to Eve? The serpent tricked Eve, saying she did not have to listen to the words of God. She didn't have to listen to nothing Adam taught her. She could go around all that God and her man said and listen to the serpent. Now let's think about that today. Is that what's going on today? You better believe it is. The serpent is in the black woman's head saying, you don't have to listen to nothing that Bible says. You, in fact, you don't even need that man. You can do, all ba you can do bad all by yourself. Woman, thou art loosed. Read. But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtility, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Believing in Christ is a simple thing. He gave us law and order. What is so hard about that? There's nothing hard about that at all. It's simple. Read. Verse 4. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus. The white man came and preached another Jesus. He didn't preach a Jesus with white woolly hair. He preached a stringy hair, thin hair, yellow hair Jesus. Go ahead. Whom we have not preached. He didn't preach a Jesus with pink red skin. The Lord preached a Jesus whose skin looked like it was burned in a furnace, burned in an oven. The white man said, no, 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 we don't want that Jesus. We don't want that woolly haired Jesus. We don't want that black Jesus. We want a yellow, thin haired Jesus. We want a pink red skin Jesus. Read that again. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit, which we have not received. Another spirit is that white man. He's another spirit. Go ahead. Or another gospel. Or another, what's the new, what's this another gospel that they have not preached? That God loves all races, that we should all races come together as one. We just read that came from the Greeks in right. 1 Maccabees chapter 1, verse 41 down. But that 1 Maccabees chapter 1, verse 41, is what Christianity is all about. That all should be one people. That's the gospel you hear in Sunday school. That's the gospel you see on TV. TV, TV is it TBN? TBN. TBN, CBN, and all of Christian networks. The word network. It's all 1 Maccabees chapter 1, verse 41. That all should be one people. Read that again. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit, which ye have not received, or another gospel, which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with them. And the way we bear with them is correcting them, that doctrine right. with the scripture. That's how we bear well with them. Correcting them, reproving them with the words of God. Okay? So now, let's go back to Isaiah 32. This is the book of Isaiah chapter 32 and so verse I 5. I don't want to forget the thought. I made a point. I was comparing what the CIA did during the 60s with Gloria Steinem, sending her red nasty behind in black groups and beguiling the black woman to fight against her black man. That's what she did and helped orchestrate. 
Let's read this. Isaiah chapter 32 and verse 5. The vile person shall be no more called liberal. You see that? The Bible says the vile person shall no more be called liberal. See, we like liberals, and we say liberals, they like everything. They're for everyone, but the Bible says they're vile. Why? Because at the end of the day, they have an ulterior motive of destruction for our people. Regardless of what they say on the surface, we're for Black Lives Matter, they say. We're for black people getting rights, but at the end of the day, we get drugs in the community, we get guns in the community, poverty in the community. Now you might say, what does that have to do with anything? But I'm gonna remind me to go back to uh, crime in the black community. Because you might say, ain't nobody tell a black man to pick up the gun and start robbing his people. I'm gonna show you how it does, how the liberal has orchestrated that thing. I'm gonna show you what scripture. But before we get to that, I want to finish this thought here. Go ahead. Verse 5. The vile person shall no more be called liberal, nor the churl said to be bountiful. For the vile person will speak villainly. See that? The vile person shall speak villainy. Liberals are villains. Go ahead. And, and his... guess what? In the black student unions, all those whites in there that sit amongst the black people, they all say that they're liberals. They're all, we love black people. We love you. But the second you bring out that black people are kings, that black people, we rule the earth. Oh, no, mm -mm. no, 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 no. Now we're the enemy. What happened to the love? Where did the love go? Wasn't that a song? Where is the love? Where did the love go? There was no love from the beginning. It's all about monitoring us so that we stay in our place. Go ahead. Verse 6, for the vile person will speak villainy, and his heart will work iniquity to practice hypocrisy. You see that? His heart will work iniquity to practice hypocrisy. That's what liberals do. Go ahead. And to utter error against the Lord. Uh, liberals utter error against the Lord. Whatever the Bible says, they're against it. Go ahead. To make empty the soul of the hungry. We are the hungry. They're making empty our souls because they don't want us to get the words of God. They want us to have democracy and Christianity. They've done two things, which is the one and the same. Go ahead. And he will cause the drink of the thirsty to fail. Read. The instruments also of the churl are evil. He his instruments is democracy and his religions. Go ahead. He hey, his public school, his board of education is an instrument of evil. You mean with all his black teachers, they can't stop the doctrine that Christopher Columbus discovered America. Right. They have no... Black teachers have no power at all. They have to teach that, and that's an instrument of evil. Read that part again, verse 7. Verse 7. The instruments also of the churl are evil. He deviseth wicked devices to destroy the poor with lying words. To destroy us with what? With lying words. With lying words. That's how they destroy us, with lying words. We're all one people. Multiculturalism is a device that they use to destroy us. Because in a multicultural curriculum, Europeans are always on top and blacks and Latinos are always on the bottom. You'll get 80% European history and, and with black history, what do you get? Martin Luther King Jr. marched in Selma, Alabama, crossing some damn bridge. That's all we get. Right. Go ahead. Verse, I'm sorry, verse seven. The instruments also of the church are evil. He deviseth wicked devices to destroy the poor with lying words. Even when the needy speaketh right. Even when we speak right, we're saying, hey, you're killing us with bad education. You're killing us with the mass incarceration. You're killing us with the police. You're killing us with drugs. And they go, really? Well, we'll talk about it. We'll come to some kind of agreement later on. It's always, let's, ha let's sit down and talk. This has been going on for decades and centuries. Go ahead. Verse 8. But the liberal deviseth liberal things, and by liberal things shall he stand. Now watch this. Rise up, ye women that are at ease. So you black women, Latin women, you've been at ease for a while. Some of you have lived good on public assistance, welfare, and you thought the white man was your friend. Not realizing that public assistance, uh, uh, welfare, all of that has divided and broken and destroyed your families, your households, okay? It's our job to keep the family together. But no, the white man says, I'm looking out for you, sister. I love you. I know that black man, he don't love you. So sister, you need to separate from him. 
get away from him. He's half crazy anyway. Now, I'm not saying black men, ain't, some of us ain't crazy. Some of us are half crazy. But there are solutions for all of us. Sisters have been at ease and have listened to the subtlety of Europeans. Sisters have become nothing but Negro Europeans right. in their mind. Just watch them. And they have fought and spoken against their black man. That's what they have done. And their Latin man. Check the history out with the young lords. The Puerto Rican woman stood up against the Puerto Rican man. Talking about we ain't going to give them no sex till they do what we want. All kind of evil. Read it again, verse 9. Verse 9. Rise up, ye women that are at ease. That don't mean rise up against your man, sister. It means rise up in unison with your man. And rise up for the words of God. That's what it's saying. Go ahead. Hear my voice, ye careless daughters. God's voice is the Bible. The Lord wants you, sisters, to hear his voice. The, the first thing the Most High introdu introduced to us was marriage. When you read Genesis, marriage between a man and a woman. So why in your mind, sister, I ain't got to get married. I, uh, uh, I, uh, uh, I'm not doing that. He might be crazy. Well, sister, you might be crazy too. You and me can be crazy together. We can have crazy babies together so long as we together. But you're going to separate from me, fight me, and join with the man that oppressed us and destroyed our families. Are you crazy? Are you insane? At the end, this man is going to kill you. Check the history. Remember, now I, I'm going brief with this. King Herod married one of the daughters of the Maccabean family. She had babies from Herod. What did Herod do? Kill her kids. Then killed her. I'm going to say it again. This black woman thought she was sitting lovely, married to the devil. Just look it up. Look up King Herod's wife. Okay? I forgot her name off the top of my head. But just look it up. King Herod's wife. They had black babies. King Herod killed them babies and then killed her. She thought she was living lovely. That's why Mordecai got on Esther, sitting hot and pretty on the, right. on the queen's throne, on the throne. He said, don't think you're going to escape more than your people. They, he said, once we die, he's going to kill you. Esther got herself together. She said, oh, shoot, he might be right. This fool king might kill me. Let me do what I have to do. So, sister, the message is still the same for you today. Read it again, verse 9. Verse 9. Rise up, ye women that are at ease. Hear my voice, ye careless daughters. Give ear unto my speech. God is telling you women to rise up. Give ear to his speech. Now, let's go to the video for you. You black sister, you sisters that want to be feminists, you really don't know what you're involved in. Let me show you the outcome of feminism. Turn, turn up the volume. I want the volume up. I want these black feminists to hear this thing. We need to kill all men. I am sick of being a baby factory that produces more men that will just, in the future, subjugate me. So the only answer to that is to kill male babies and um, just kill any man that you see, like in the streets, like any swinging dick, just kill him. Because um, we want the species to go on, but we want it only to go on with women in it. So that's what we have to do. That's the only way to keep the human race going is with just women. How can you keep, now I'm sure the deceit behind this thing. She said, we want to keep the species going. I'm going to tell you, she's talking about she want to keep white folks going. Cause in order, cause you gotta have a man somewhere. There gotta be some sperm somewhere to keep it going. They want black women to take hold of this and kill black men. This is the agenda of the feminist movement. So you sisters being simple out there, joining with these people, trying to kill your man, kill your boys. Give me that Exodus. That whole abortion. Give me a, the abortion. Who's the, uh, Margaret? Not Margaret Thatcher. What's her name? Margaret Steinem, or something like that. So, what is it? Sanger? Sanger. Margaret Sanger. Yeah, that devil. That whole eugenics thing was not to kill white male babies. It was to kill black male babies. And they were introducing the eugenics with the feminist movement as well. That's her right there. Okay. Read that for me with Pharaoh told Shifra and Pua. Exodus chapter 1 verse 15. And the king of Egypt spake to the Hebrew midwives. 
of which the name of the one was Shifra, and the name of the other Pua. And he said, When ye do the office of a midwife to the Hebrew women, and see them upon the stools, if it be a son, then ye shall kill him. You see that? So what this white woman is saying is what's nothing new. It has always been an agenda to kill the black boys. Right. Kill them. Abort them. Why? Because they know Messiah is coming through us. That's what they know. It's that we don't know. Let me calm down. I'm knocking stuff down on the table. <laughs> Go ahead. If it be a son, then ye shall kill him. But if it be a daughter, then she shall live. But the wit my excuse me, but the midwives feared God and did not as the king of Egypt commanded them. See that, sisters, that's what the Lord that's rise up you women that are at ease. Right. That's give ear to my speech, you careless daughters. That's what Shifra and Pua did. So, no, 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 we're not listening to that. Sure, in the face of the king and Pharaoh, they said, Pharaoh live forever. You know they had to put them on the game because they could have got put to death. So Shifra and Pua, you got to give them kudos. They had to say the right thing before Pharaoh. Oh, great Pharaoh, live forever. Yes, Pharaoh, we will kill the young boys. As soon as they walked out, they said, that nigga's crazy. We ain't doing nothing, he said. You hear that? That dude is crazy. Go ahead. Verse 17, but the midwives feared God and did not as the king of Egypt commanded them. That's what the Lord is looking for from you, sisters. Fear God and do not as Pharaoh orders. Do not abort your babies. Do not destroy your families. Go ahead. But save the men children alive. See that? But save the men children alive. That's what they were doing. Making sure the boys lived. Because guess what? The boys continue your race. Right. Sister. That's what these feminists know. They want to kill off the boys to kill your race. She don't want to kill off the white race because she's talking about we want to keep the species going. So they, then somebody got to die. Somebody got to live. Who are they talking about then? So they ain't fooling me no more. You might have fooled me when I was in Christianity. When I was high on drugs in Christianity. <laughs> Christianity is a drug. That's all I mean. So did you finish that? Yes, sir. Go ahead. And verse 18. And the king of Egypt called for the midwives and said unto them, Why have ye done this thing and have saved the men children alive? So you can imagine they called these two women before the throne. And you can imagine Pharaoh's not because, you know, in your mind, we got to we got to get the right visuals. Pharaoh don't sit on the throne by himself. He sits on the throne. Of course, he got the queen with him. But guess what? He got soldiers all in the palace so that anything break out, you dead. So Shifra and Pua had to walk down the aisle with soldiers on both sides. Sometimes we just think the whole palace was empty and just Pharaoh said, no, get, the, get your mind right. You got soldiers all up in there in order. Go ahead. And the king of Egypt called for the midwives and said unto them, why have you done this thing and have saved the men children alive? Verse 19. And the midwife said unto Pharaoh, because the Hebrew women are not as the Egyptian women. So you got to picture this. Imagine in your head, when they got summoned to the palace, they already had their plan worked out. Girl, you know Pharaoh, he mad now because the boys is alive. Everybody see the boy children. Let's get our stories right. What are we going to say, girl? What are we going to say? Well, I know we almost have to say that uh, the, the Hebrew children ain't like their children. Okay, that's what we're going to say. Now they brought up in it with swords. On his side, brought up there, Pharaoh, he's not talking quiet to them. He's raising his voice because he's mad. And they said once again, they can't raise their voice. Oh, great Pharaoh, live forever. The boy children are alive because they are not like the other children. They are, read that verse again so you get your thought right. And the midwife said unto Pharaoh, because the Hebrew women are not as the Egyptian women. Israelite women ain't like African women. I'm going to say that one again. Right. Israelite women ain't like African women. They different. Go ahead. For they are lively. They are lively, great Pharaoh. And are delivered ere the midwives come in unto them. Before the midwives get to the house, Pharaoh, they, them babies are already born. So there's nothing we can do about it. The children has already popped out. Go ahead. Therefore, God dealt well with the midwives. And because... The midwives feared the Lord. The Most High blessed these midwives, Shifra and Pua. See, a lot of sisters are going to get blessed because you don't do right. right. Go ahead. 
and the people multiplied and waxed See, very that, mighty. And we we didn't die, we multiplied. That's what the Lord is looking for. Go ahead. And it came to pass because the midwives feared God that he made them houses. Mm -hmm. And Pharaoh charged all his people saying, every son that is born, ye shall cast into the river. Pharaoh got so mad. He said, listen, I can't depend on these Israelite women. So my command is go forth and kill the boys. Go ahead. And every daughter ye shall save alive. But the girls leave them alive. Okay, so that's what was going on. So what we're seeing today with the feminist movement, with the abortion clinics in our community, is nothing new. Nothing new. They want to kill. The, remember, get that in Revelation uh, 7. This is what, I'm going to show you what they know. This is what white scholars know what's going to come through our people. What verse, Bishop? The four, seven and four. Revelation chapter seven and verse four. And I heard the number of them which were sealed. And there were sealed an hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. So when I said Messiah is going to come through us, I'm talking about saviors. I'm talking about the 144. Thank you, sister. The 144. That's what's coming through us. Okay. That's what Margaret Sanger knew. That's what these feminists know. They said, we got to kill them, them boys. The prophecy says 144,000 is going to be born in the earth. Go ahead. Of the tribe of Judah were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Reuben were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Gad were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Asher were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Naphtali were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Manasseh were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Simeon were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Levi were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Issachar were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Zebulon were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Joseph were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Benjamin were sealed 12,000. After this. That was it. That was it. That's what they want to kill off. They know this prophecy. They, give me that in Revelation 12 and 9. Watch, I'm going to prove to you they know these scriptures. Revelations chapter 12 and, and verse 9. And when I say they, I'm talking about their, their elite scholars. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels was cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God, and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. Keep reading. Verse 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. We overcome him by the blood of Christ. Go ahead. And by the word of their testimony. I'm going to go over that in a moment. Go ahead. And they loved not their lives unto the death. Now here's the point I wanted. Verse 12. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth. And to the, of the sea. Listen good. For the devil is come down unto you. Let's see why. Having great wrath. Here it comes. Because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. How does he know he got a short time? He's reading the scriptures and examining what's happening in the earth. You mean that they don't see Israel waking up? They see it. The scholars see it. This is why you got that abortion push in the earth. Kill them boys. Why? Give me that Obadiah, the last verse. In the book of Revelation, the, they're called 144,000. But Obadiah gives them, a, they call them another name. The last verse. Obadiah, the last verse. Obadiah, chapter 1, verse 21. And saviors shall come up on Mount Zion to judge the Mount of Esau, and the kingdom shall be the Lord's. Y'all see that word? Saviors? Saviors with an S. Plural. That's the 144,000. That's what it's talking about. That's the white man's fear. Kill them off. And they went to the black woman and said, Sister, kill them black. But kill them babies. And some of our sisters have been just so foolish. Just so foolish. But the scripture says you can do nothing against the truth. Only for it. The 144 is being born in the earth as we speak. Some of, half of them, I would say, they're going. Half of them is already here, if not all of them. It's just 
the wake up time. Right. The most I just got to stir them spirits and wake them up. Psalms 57. So can we show the video again? I just want, I, I want you sisters in case you came online and you're curious and not sure of what the feminist movement is all about. And it's, you know, you hear a, a sister say, oh, I'm a black feminist. You just, she, she need her, uh, <laughs> uh, I'll be nice. I ain't gonna say that. Go ahead, play the video. We need to kill all men. I am sick of being a baby factory that produces more men that will just, in the future, subjugate me. So the only answer to that is to kill male babies and um, just kill any man that you see, like in the streets, like any swinging dick, just kill him. Because um, we want the species to go on, but we want it only to go on with women in it. So that's what we have to do. That's the only way to keep the human race going is with just women. Wow, so she went to a place of Amazons, right? Okay, give me Psalms 57, and let's start at verse 1. Psalms 57. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 57, and verse 1. Be merciful unto me, O God. Be merciful unto me. So that's what all of us want. I know everybody in here and everyone listening online, we all want mercy. So this is the song that, uh, what's his name again? What's his brother? To the chief music? Al Tashith. Okay, Al Tashith. What's the sect that my all Mictan of David. Mitch, okay. yeah, of David. <laughs> <laughs> is asking for mercy. And that's the same thing we are asking for in our prayers and songs. Go ahead. For my soul trusteth in thee. Yea, in the shadow of thy wings will I make my refuge. The shadow of the Lord's wings is this Bible. I'm gonna say it again. The shadow of God's wings is this Bible. Go ahead. Until these calamities be overpassed. I will cry unto God most high, unto God that performeth all things for me. He shall send from heaven and save me from the reproach of him that will swallow me up. Selah. This word selah means it is true or amen. It's another phrase for amen. It is true. Go ahead. God shall send forth his mercy and his truth. See that God shall send forth his mercy and his truth. Go ahead. My soul is among lions. Uh, my soul is among lions. Go ahead. And I lie even among them that are set on fire, uh -huh. even the sons of men, whose teeth are spears and arrows, and their tongue a sharp sword. So it's the same thing with us when it says my soul is among lions. We're amongst the wicked. Give me that in Peter where it says the devil is like a, a lion. You know what I'm talking about? Find me that. Find me that. So y'all get the thought right. Okay. Call it and read it. This is the book. Uh, first Peter chapter 5 and verse 8 be sober be vigilant because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour see that the devil's like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour he always looks for that male or female that wanders from the herd so likewise they look for for that male or female that wanders from the congregation. Oh, look. Look at that lamb right there. Just wandered off. That gazelle wandered off by itself. And a lion pounces on you. So go back to Psalm 57. Psalm chapter 57 and verse 4. My soul is among lions. And I lie even among them that are set on fire. Even the sons of men. Whose teeth are spears and arrows. And their tongue a sharp sword. Be thou exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let thy glory be above all the earth. They have prepared a net for my steps. A net means a trap. These lions, these sons of men, have set and prepared a net for our steps. So the Lord is constantly warning us. The nations that you're among have set traps for y'all. This is why we always got to let our sons and our daughters know. This walk in this truth ain't easy. There's traps wherever we go in this world. Somebody got a net there for us. Read it again. Verse 6. They have prepared a net for my steps. My soul is bowed down. They have digged a pit before me. Into the midst whereof they are fallen themselves. You see that? Here's a prophecy. The nations have digged a pit before me. Into the midst whereof they are fallen themselves. Selah. Watch this. Give me Proverbs. Let me explain that part to you right there. 
Because you may ask, well, what does it mean it says they dig the pit and fell in it themselves? Well, this is, this is a principle God has taught us in his law. Proverbs 26, verse 27. Watch this. Proverbs chapter 26 and verse 27. Whoso diggeth a pit. Whoever digs a trip. A, a trip. Whoever. What does it say again? Whoso diggeth a pit. Whoever digs a pit. Meaning you're setting a trap for somebody. Go ahead. Shall fall therein. You shall fall therein. So now you may say, I'm going to just tell you brothers and sisters. This always happens to us as individuals. You have a brother or a sister who don't like another brother or another sister and will set up, dig a pit so that that brother, meaning you setting up a scenario so the brother or sister you don't like can fall in. The Bible says when you do that, you're going to fall in. That same thing happens with nations that set traps for our people. Now I'm going to give you an example. Watch this. I'm, I'm going to go to Sirach 27 before I give you an example. Sirach 27, verse 26. This is the book of Sirach, Ecclesiasticus, chapter 27 and verse 26. Whoso diggeth a pit shall fall therein, and he that setteth a trap shall be taken therein. So once again, that's for us as individuals, but he's letting us know it also deals with nations. You dig a pit for somebody you set a trap? You're going to end up in that hole. Now watch this. Give me Proverbs 30. So I made mention earlier about the drugs in our communities, mass incarcerations, abortion clinics. Uh, I'm going to throw this in. Alcohol, uh, liquor stores on every other corner. Churches on every street. Religion's a hell of a drug. Watch this. Proverbs 30. This is what Solomon says, verse 8 and 9. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 30 and verse 8. Remove far from me vanity and lies. Remove, remove far from me vanity and lies. Go ahead. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Solomon says to the Lord, don't give me poverty and please don't give me riches. And he's going to explain why. Go ahead. Feed me with food convenient for me. Feed me with food, O oh Lord, that is convenient for me. Go ahead. Lest I be full. Lest I be full through my riches. And deny thee. And deny that you exist. There is no God. Now I want you all to examine this. Look at our brothers and sisters, what we would call, quote unquote, who have made it. And when I say made it, they made it from the field Negro, from being a field Negro to a house Negro. Now they're living lovely in the master's house. They are making, they have multi-million dollar contracts. And they're the ones that say, who is God? Who is the Lord? Read that again so you get the thought right. Verse, verse 8. Remove far from me vanity and lies. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with food convenient for me, lest I be full and deny thee. Lest I be full and deny thee. This is why some brothers and sisters say, oh, if only Jay-Z and Beyonce can repent. You hold your breath for that. You're going to drop dead. When Beyonce came out, but type in Beyonce, you know that on the foot, I forgot what it was called. She did the Black Power, what was it called? Halftime performance. Beyonce halftime performance. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not saying this out of hatred for me, I love Beyonce. But I know the mindset of our people that live in the master's house. Do you got it? That's too long, I don't wanna see all that, I wanna, I wanna is there a video, I just wanna short, video clip is that it i went to did she have an afro i thought she had an afro that ain't it it was 2016 was it last year yeah see that black panther party no right there right there right there go down okay that's it right there now is there a video that goes with that you might have to go to youtube Go to YouTube and type in, uh, what was it called? Beyonce Halftime Black Panther tribute or something like that. I just want you to see. When this happened, you had a lot of brothers and sisters in the Kemetic community, and some of you Israelites really thought that our sister, Beyonce, was going to stand up and do something phenomenal. Uh, this is a short one. I think it's for, just put that one on right there. Is that the video? I don't want to see her clothes. 
Is it need the, a crappy the, drawing the, the of a video? pink bird thing? Ask your niece. Go to Fiverr and get Let's a professionally it designed it. logo. Queen Bey honored the King of Pop in her Super Bowl halftime performance. Beyonce subtly paid homage to Michael Jackson's Super Bowl 27 performance, rocking her own black leather and gold chain outfit in Super Bowl 50. The square two made Beyonce's military jacket almost identical to the one Jackson wore in 1993, but this actually went with the theme of the entire halftime show, which paid tribute to 50 years of outstanding halftime shows. There was one major way that Beyonce's halftime garb majorly differed from the King's outfit. It was the giant 18 karat gold footballs on her jacket. See, no, I don't like that one because it's about Michael Jackson. No, it was regarding the black. That was the whole ruckus about. And people say, oh, we never knew Beyonce was black. Because they said she's giving uh, uh, credit, credence to the Black Queen Panthers. May honored the King of Pop okay. in her Super Bowl anyway, halftime so performance. I don't want to see it no more. Anyway, Beyonce subtly really paid homage to Michael Beyonce Jackson's Super her Bowl 27 performance, rocking her own black leather and gold chain outfit in Super Bowl 50. <sighs> These no, two made Beyonce's military jacket almost Negro identical to the one Jackson wore in 1993. They made but this uh, actually went with the theme of the entire halftime show, which paid tribute to 50. But in terms of being a force to be reckoned with, don't hold your breath. Standing up for righteousness, do not hold your breath. Okay? Read that again for us. Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 30, verse 8. Where are the Colin Kaepernick's in the athletic field? They got all that. When you had brothers starting to stand up and, or take a knee, they said, listen, we're going to donate millions of dollars to the team. Don't do that no more, right? And they say, yes, I'm as a, yes. These are your, I tell you, the, the, these stars, these athletes, who many of us love, they are nothing more than our modern day house Negroes. They will not speak against the master. Massa. They won't speak against Massa. Okay? They'll speak against you and me. Look, look at your, those, those dudes that do sports, uh, the anchors. Right, newscasters. Those, you know who I'm talking yes, about. Yes, sir, yes, sir. What was the dude I pointed to this morning? Uh, Stephen A. Smith. And there's some others, too. You have a, And they always get them. They were tearing down Colin Kaepernick. Right. They always go against black people on behalf of Massa. Always. So that's why I said they're nothing more than your modern-day house Negroes. Okay? They eat the best food. They have the best clothes. They have the best vehicles. They have the best of all of this world. So they're not going to dare your modern day uh, Dathan, Corin and on when you read in the book of Numbers. So where are we at? Proverbs chapter 30 and verse 8. Right. Remove far from me vanity and lies. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with food convenient for me, lest I be full and deny thee and say, who is the Lord? Who is the Lord? That's why you got black stars talking about, oh, we Illuminati. They're doing all these. Let me not do it because they're going to. Somebody's going to freeze my hands and go, see, he's admitting he's a woman. You simple you Negroes out there. They're doing a triangle symbol. They're doing all these things. In them, and they got commercial. I think it's a Doritos commercial where they got uh, Illuminati this, Illuminati that. And you have many black stock, Kanye West. They're all saying it down with Illuminati. Why? Because they're full. They're full. I mean, when it says they're full, like it says here, meaning rich. They are rich. Read that again. Lest I be fool and deny thee and say, who is the Lord? Or lest I be poor and steal. See that part right there? Or lest I be poor and steal. The Lord knows in his word, he's showing all of us, when you're in poverty, you will steal. Why? You're stealing to fill your belly because you, you, want, you want food. You mean the so-called white man doesn't know that? They understand human nature. The white man has think tanks. Keep them in poverty, they will surely steal. They know that. So this is why when they gave the Irish and the Italians the fire, the, the, they, they made them in charge of fire department and police departments, and they were crying about uh, jobs, they said, listen, there's always going to be work. Why? Because what did they do with the black community and the Latin community? They kept the black community and the Latin community in Poverty, and it was done by design. I'm gonna say it again. It was done by design. So when the Irish took over the police department, they said, 
McDougal, don't worry. Don't worry, man, a laddie. Don't worry. These niggas over here, they're going to steal. We're keeping them in the midst of poverty, laddie. Surely they will steal. If not all, at least some. Sure enough, you get hungry enough, you will start to steal. Then they said, and we're going to help them out. Put drugs in the community. What if they don't sell drugs? Listen, all of them might not sell drugs, but surely some of them will. Selling drugs will give them money quick. They, there's a, there is a science behind it. Read that part again. I want just that part. Verse 9. Lest I be fool and deny thee and say, who is the Lord? Or lest I be poor and steal. Lest I be poor and steal. They know that. Keep a people in the midst of poverty long enough. All of them might not steal or won't steal. But surely a certain proportion of them surely will steal. Then we gotcha. That's how they do it. That once the police get you, you go to the court. There's always work being done. From the court, you got the court officers to the prison. You got the correctional officers in there. There's a, the justice system, or judicial system as they call it. It's always it's set up, okay, and it starts with keep them in poverty. These things are going to happen. Keep them in poverty. Was that what verse you read? Uh, down to verse 9. Did you finish 9? Yes, sir. Give me Sirach 10, verse 31. In the Apocrypha. Sirach chapter 10, verse 31. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 10, and verse 31. He that is honored in poverty, how much more in riches. So, brothers, sisters, if we are honored in our poverty, it says how much more in riches. Go ahead. And he that is dishonorable in riches. Our people that are dishonorable and they're rich. Go ahead. How much more in poverty? How much more will they be dishonorable in poverty? If they're rich and they're dishonorable, how much more in poverty? So what is that saying? That's a message for the field Negro and the house Negro. The house Negro, if he's a dishonorable wretch living in a master's house, will not help his or her people at all, could care less. How much more dishonorable will they be in poverty? That's what the scripture is saying. Like when you look at the movie um, Birth of a Nation uh, by Nate Parker that just came out. Okay, Remember you had the house Negro who was always doing master's bidding. Even getting the brother's wife to, to have sex with the master's friend. And they couldn't stand the house Negro because he always did the bidding. Okay, He would always listen for rebellion. Uh, meetings of, of what is it called when you leave? When you of being a runaway, always listening for it so he could go report back. You know what they're going to do? It's the same thing you read about in the book of Numbers, chapter 24, 25. That's where it's at, with Dathan Cora. And I just want to know the chapter. People online may want to read it on their own. Where is it, Dathan Cora and on? Number 16, is it? Okay. Find it. Let me see. Yep, 16. Read 16 the first verse. Numbers, chapter 16, verse 1. Now Korah, the son of Izar, the son of Kohad, the son of Levi, and Dathan, and Abiram, the sons of Eliab, and On, the son of Peleth, sons of Reuben, took men, and they rose up before Moses with certain of the children of Israel, 250 princes of the assembly, famous in the congregation, men of renown. So these dudes, these brothers right here, when we came out of Egypt, these guys had status in Egypt. They wanted to lead Israel back to Egypt. Not because all Israel did so well, but because they did extremely well. That's why I said, let's go back. That's what they wanted to do. That's the house Negro's job. Go, let's go right back to Massa. Okay? That's like I always give the example. During the time of slavery, we were singing songs in the field, swing low, sweet chariot, coming forth to carry me home. The house Negro was busy singing, God bless America. That's what they were singing in the house. God bless America. So think of it. Look at it today. I want you to examine your churches. Look at the sports. The Af look, What are they singing? The Star Spangled Band and all that stuff. Nobody's singing Swing Low Sweet Ch Nobody want to go home. Nobody. Give me that Hebrews 13. Nobody's saying we got to go home from whence we came. Nobody's saying that at all. Never, ever, ever when you hear these people say that, especially them in the church in the house Negroes. 
Hebrews is it 13, 14, something like that. Hebrew. Might, is it Hebrews 13, 11? I'm not looking at it, so I want you to find it for me about another country. Oh, I got you. Bear with me a second. Hebrews 11, 13. verse 14 and 15. Okay. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 14. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. See that? For they that say such things. You talking about deliverance? You talking about the faith of the forefathers? We must speak plainly that we seek a country. Go ahead. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. You see that? Nobody. I'm talking about in Christianity and I'm talking about your house, Negroes. Nobody's saying, let's go home. Nobody's thinking about our people think this is our home. This is not our home. We don't. They might have had opportunity to have returned, but now they desire a better country. We desire a better country. Go ahead. That is in heavenly. And you know what? When it says that is a heavenly, the average Christian is so dilapidated in his or her mind, they think the heavenly means up in the sky where they're going to eat pie, lay on a cloud and sing. That's not talking about up in the sky. Let me tell you something. Our kingdom is going to be so beautiful, it's going to look like it descended from heaven. That's what it's talking about. Give me that in Revelation. Hold on. We're coming right back here. Revelation 21, I believe it's verse 12, about the gates. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 21 and verse 12. And had a great and high, excuse me, and had a wall great and high, and had 12 gates, and the gates 12 angels, and names written thereon which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. That's proof right there that the coming kingdom of heaven on earth is not for all races. On one gate says Judah. Another gate says Benjamin. Another gate says Levi. Another gate says Ephraim. Another Manasseh, Gad, Simeon, so forth and so on. There's no gate that says white man. There's no gate that says Irish. Polish. There's no gate, by the way, that says Baptist, Pentecostal, Lutheran, Seventh Day Wickedness, or Jehovah Wicked. There's no gates that say that. Read it again so we get the thought right. Revelation chapter 21 and verse 12. And had a wall great and high, and had twelve gates, and at the twelve, and at the gates, twelve angels, and names written thereon, which are the names of the twelve tribes. Of the children of Israel. Our kingdom is going to be in so much order. Guess what? You know how you're walking wherever you want? No, no, no. In this kingdom on earth, Judah walking through the gate that says Judah. You ain't walking through Benjamin's gate. You know, sometimes you get lazy. You just go through whatever door you want to. No. There's going to be an angel at that gate that's going to make sure Judah go through Judah gate. Levi going to go through Levi gate. Ephraim going through Ephraim gate. Ain't no mixing up. Oh, I'm going over here. Just, it's closer to me. Take your behind right over there to that gate. The gate right there. That's your gate. That's what the angel's purpose is. Read on. Verse 13. On the east, three gates. On the north, three gates. On the south, three gates. And on the west, three gates. That's 12. If you can multiply, that's 12. Go ahead. And the wall of the city had 12 foundations. See, the walls of our city is going to have 12 foundations. Go ahead. And in them, the names of the 12 apostles of the land. And they're going to have the names of the 12 apostles. Those are going to be the leaders of the 144. Then they, and get, and they're like, okay, no, it's not going to say Peter, James, and John. Though their new names that they get, it's going to be written. And you're going to know who the 12 are. Christ's going to say these are the 12 right here. Ain't going to be no confusion. Go ahead. Verse 15. And he that talked with me had a golden reed to measure the city and the gates thereof. And the wall thereof, and the city lieth four square, and the length is as large as the breadth. And he it's gonna be as long as long as it is high. Go ahead. And he measured the city with the reed. It's gonna be a perfect measurement. Go ahead. Twelve thousand furlongs. The length and the breadth and the height of it are equal. And he measured the wall thereof in hundred and forty and four cubits, according to the measure of a man. That is of the angels. So this kingdom is going to be huge. So it says, I'm not talking about the measurement of a man. I'm talking about the measurement of an angel. So that's how bad the kingdom is going to be on 
earth. Now, watch this in case somebody's down. I know some of y'all knew. Give me Isaiah 60. Give me Isaiah 60. You know what I want from verse 10, I believe it is. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 60 and verse 10. And remember, we're going back to Hebrews. Yes, sir. That's where we started. And the sons of strangers shall build up thy walls. So you want to know how the walls going to be built in the kingdom of heaven on earth? It says the sons of strangers shall build up thy walls. Go ahead. And their king shall minister unto thee. And their king shall minister unto the Israelites. Go ahead. For in my wrath I smote thee. In God's wrath he smote us. He made us slaves for a very long time. Go ahead. But in my favor have I had mercy on thee. But in his favor he has had mercy on us. That's the sacrifice Christ did for us. Go ahead. Therefore thy gates shall be open continually. Oh, the gates to our kingdom, is, they're going to be open continually, and it's going to explain why. Go ahead. They shall not be shut day nor night. Let's see why. Go ahead. That men may bring unto thee the forces of the Gentiles. That the nation shall bring unto us the wealth. When it says forces, that translates to wealth. The wealth of the nations. That's what Gentiles means. Go ahead. And that their kings may be brought. And that their kings may be brought. That king is going to be dragged. Go ahead. For the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee. Any kingdom. China. Japan. France. Russia. That says hell no. We ain't serving no niggas. Read. Shall perish. Shall what? Shall perish. Shall perish. Go ahead. Yea, those nations shall utterly. Excuse me. Yea, those nations shall be utterly wasted. See that? Why don't they read that in church? You're so busy singing this little light of mine. Oh, shut up. <laughs> Make the Lord sick. Start reading the scriptures with understanding. Read. Verse 13. The glory of Lebanon shall come unto thee. The wealth of Lebanon shall come unto us. Go ahead. The fir tree, the pine tree, and the box together. Uh-huh. To beautify the place of my sanctuary. See, the nations are going to bring the, those trees that he just named to the sanctuary so that the sanctuary can be built. So that the sons of strangers can build this kingdom that's going to be on earth. Not in the sky. That's why I said it's going to be so beautiful. It's going to look heavenly. Was that it? And I will make the place of my feet glorious. See that? That's the... The place of God's feet is Jerusalem. He said, I'm going to make it glorious. Okay? So the nation's going to do their part. Then the Most High going to have to add on to that thing. He said, I'm going to make this thing look glorious. It's going to be so bad, it's going to be heavenly. Was that it? Yes, sir. Go back. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 16. But now they desire a better country that is and heavenly. That's what it's talking about. When it says we desire a better country that is a heavenly. We desiring the new kingdom on earth. Not up in the sky. Because it ain't going to be up in the sky. Hold me that. Hold me that. You know what I want the Lord's prayer. Because people forget. A lot, a lot of you new people, you forget the Lord's prayer. And you could, some of you memorize the Lord's prayer. But you forget. Watch this. This is the book of Matthew chapter 6 and verse 9. After this manner, therefore pray ye. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom what? Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Go ahead. Thy will be done uh -huh. in earth. Where? In earth. Where? In earth. Where? In earth. Uh -huh. As it is in heaven. There's going to be a heavenly connection there. So the Christ is telling us right there. The kingdom's going to come on earth. And it's going to be just like it is in heaven. So now, let's go back to Hebrews chapter 11. What verse was that? Verse 16. Start up above it where we started at. Verse 14. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. Uh -huh. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. So as we repent, we got to speak plainly. This, Give me that. You know what I want? This is not your rest. You know what I want, right? I can't. I ain't got my concordance. Fine. Where is it? Thank you. Because let me tell you something. Christians and some of you Israelites, Christians and some of you Israelites believe that the United States of America is the kingdom of heaven on earth. 
And what I mean by that, because some of you, you'll all deny it. No, I don't think that. I don't think that, brother. What you talking about? But how many of you are saying, I want to go home to the country from whence I came out? How many of you, Christians, and how many of you, Israelites, are saying, I want to go home to my country, the country that God gave us, the country from whence we came out? How many of you talking like that? Most of you talking about, oh, I want to build this house over here, and I want this, and I want to have all these things because I want to stay here. And then when I die, I'm going to bury me over there in the land over there. You're not thinking about going home. Read that. Where are we going? This is the book of Micah, chapter 2 and verse 10. Arise ye and depart, for this is not your rest. Arise ye and depart, for this, meaning this country, this kingdom here, is not your rest. So you're busy singing. Well, we don't want to sing Swing Low Sweet Chariot no more. We want to sing God bless America, my home, sweet home. That's what you want to sing. This is not your rest, the Bible says. This is not your rest. Read on. Verse 11. Excuse me. Arise ye and depart, for this is not your rest, because it is polluted. Because what? Because it is polluted. This country is polluted the united states of america is polluted babylon the great is polluted go ahead it shall destroy you you see that it shall destroy you that's why we read in psalms 58 about the poison of the serpents the doctrines that are here is poison it's meant to kill us did you finish that even with a sore destruction now hey i want the one that says about the soul your soul, rise up from here. No, I thought it was a mica. Find me that. Who got a concordance? Yeah, it says your soul. It says, uh, let me look at mica. Just look it up about rest. This is not your rest. Bear with me. It's telling you, uh, it's like Revelation 18 and 4, where it says, come out of her, my people. It might be Jeremiah. Find me that. Find me that. Y'all just bear with me online. Bear with me. Jeremiah 51 and 6. Thank you. Thank you. And, and, and watch this. Let's see what I'm about to say. You got it? Yes, We're sir. going to Jeremiah 51 and 6 now. This is the book. Wait, wait, wait. I'm, I'm talking to Jedediah. We're going to Jeremiah 51 and 6. Now, I want to say something about Jeremiah 51 and 6. It's going to go in conjunction with Micah 2 and 10. You have Israelites, certain Israelites that say, listen, we have to leave America and move to another country. I'm going to tell you the foolishness behind that. There's no place, listen to what I'm about to say. Now, you can move wherever you want, but there's no place on earth right now that you can move and the white man's philosophies and doctrines are not there and his politics are not there. There's, I'm going to say it again. There's no place you can go on earth where there is no white man and his doctrines and philosophies. How do I know that? Hold that. Give me Revelation 17 now. I'm coming back. I'm coming back to Jeremiah. Just bear with me. I just want, I got to fill in the gaps. Revelation 17 about all kings, the nations. Bear with me a second. 17 and, it might be 18. Bear with me, let me look. Revelation 18 and 3, that's what I want. Revelation chapter 18 and verse 3. Listen good. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. All nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Meaning, all nations have taken part in Babylon's philosophies, politics. Read. And the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. All kings on the earth do business in some shape or fashion with America. Go ahead. And the merchants of the earth are waxed rich. That's, through how, that's how we know it's talking about that. That's why it says the merchants. The merchants translates to corporations. I'm going to say it again. The merchants of the earth translates to the corporations of the earth. Go ahead. And the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. So notice the first three words. Read the first three words again. For all nations. Read it again. For all nations. Read it again. For all nations. So you brothers and sisters that want to go from one country to another, that's fine. But don't ever think you're going to escape the doctrines and philosophies of Babylon. You're not going to escape it. You're not. As long as we got that thought right, y'all carry on. 
So now, let's go back to Jeremiah 51 and verse 6. Jer Jer Jedediah, we're going to Jeremiah 51 and verse 6. Okay, 51, 51, 51, verse 6. Very good. Go this ahead. is the book of J Jeremiah, chapter 51 and verse 6. Flee out of the midst of Babylon. Flee out of the midst of Babylon. Now, you may be saying, see, brother, it says leave the country. Read on. And deliver every man his soul. Deliver every man his what? His soul. So this is a spiritual move it's talking about. It's not talking about a bodily move. This is talking about delivering your soul. That's what it's talking about. Okay? So I want everyone online, get your thought right. But you can move to Egypt if you want. That's fine. Remember some of you moved to Egypt before. And now a civil war broke out that America started. <laughs> And you ran back to a good old U.S. of A. Talking about, brothers, can y'all send money for, so I can get a plane ticket? Some of y'all wrote, wrote us on Facebook. Oh, I remember. Crying to your mamas and papas. I made a mistake. I was worse out here. So now, where was we at originally? Because you know I'm going to attend and forget my thought. Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11. Thank y'all. Now, I'm not saying don't move to another. If you want to move to another country, y'all go ahead. But don't make a doctrine and say that's what the Bible is saying. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 14. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. So when you start learning this Bible, we got to start to speak plainly that we seek a country. America is not our rest. We were brought here as slaves to repent of all our iniquities. Not to stay here. And become house Negroes. Read. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out. If we had been, some of you don't even realize the country from whence we came out. A lot of you online don't realize we fled from the land of Israel in the year 70 AD. Millions of us fled into Africa. And we stayed there for about a thousand years. Fighting, warring, and intermingling with the Hamitic nations that were there. Some of you don't even know that we set up the Dahomey Empire and things of that nature. That was Israelites. We're the ones that also became Muslims also. That was Israelites. We set up Timbuktu. That was Israelites. Some of you don't even know that. We don't. This is the book of Hebrews chapter 11 verse 14. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. See that? They might have had opportunity to return. Read. But now they desire a better country that is in heavenly. We desire a better country that is a heavenly. Our country is going to be so beautiful, it's going to be heavenly because the Lord Almighty will be in the midst of it. I want you to understand that. Now watch this. Give me, I'm going to show you how heavenly it's going to be. Give me the precept in Isaiah, I believe it is, about the sun and the moon. You know what I want, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The sun and the moon. I'm going to show you how heavenly it's going to be. Where are we going? Isaiah chapter 30 and verse 26. Bear with me. Let me get it. Isaiah, I, I got to read. See, when I read along with you, I, I get chills when I read it. <laughs> I'm imagining a better country that is a heavenly. You got that Jedediah over there? Where are we going? He don't even know what you said. 30 and 26. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 30 and verse 26. Moreover, the light of the moon shall be as the light of the sun. That's how heavenly this coming kingdom is going to be. Read it again. Verse 26. Moreover, the light of the moon shall be as the light of the sun. I know you thought the moon was bright, but the Lord is telling you, no, it's dimmed down. Because in the new kingdom on earth, the light of the moon is going to be just like the light of the sun. Go ahead. And the light of the sun. And the light of the sun that y'all see every day. Shall be sevenfold. Shall be sevenfold brighter. Wow. That's amazing. Go ahead. As the light of seven days. In the day that the Lord bindeth up the breach of his people. In the day that the 12 tribes of Israel are gathered together. That's what it means. In the day that the breach is brought. What does it say? In the day that what? In the day that the Lord bindeth up the breach of his people. Meaning when the 12 tribes of Israel are gathered together once again. The Lord says when that happens, the moon's going to be as bright as the sun. And the sun's going to be seven times brighter than what you see. Was that it? 
and healeth the stroke of their womb. Right. He's going to heal us from this captive captivity that we're in. Let's go back to Hebrews. We ain't done that. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 16. Lest there, excuse me, verse 16. <laughs> verse 16. But now they desire a better country that is in heavenly. Wherefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. Now give me chapter 13 and verse 13 and 14. This is the book of Hebrews, chapter 13 and verse 13. Let us go forth, therefore, unto him without the camp, bearing his reproach. For here have we no continuing city, but we seek one to come. So Paul was telling the Israelites, here we have no continuing city. I want to see who got their thought right. What did he mean when he said for here? Remember, he's writing to the Hebrews. I'm giving y'all hints, clues. He's writing to the Hebrews, the Israelites. Here we have no continuing city. What is he talking about? Right here. You. Oh, uh, the land, not all land and uh, we're in captivity. No, nope. remember, he's writing to the Hebrews who were in Jerusalem. Here we have no continuing city. Right. Give it to Officer Dave. Um, um, 70 AD? Yes, 70 AD. He was letting them know, this city we in is going to be destroyed. It's going to be destroyed. Jerusalem was going to be destroyed. 70, and it occurred in 70 AD. Uh, get that for me. Hold on. We're going to go to from Babylon to Timbuktu. We read it quite often enough. But I want that part. Page 84. Babylon to Tim, from Babylon to Timbuktu, page 84. Written by? Written by Rudolf R. Windsor. In the year 65 B.C., the Roman armies under General Pompey captured Jerusalem in 70 A.D. General Vespasian and his son Titus put an end to the Jewish state with great slaughter during the period of the military governors of Palestine. Many outrages and atrocities were committed against the residue of the people. During the period from Pompey to Julius, it has been estimated that over one million Jews fled into Africa. Over one million Jews fled into Africa. Over one million Jews fled into Africa. That's why I was, say, was saying earlier, when we fled in there, not only did we fight with the Hamitic nations, but we joined with many of them as well and set up our own empires. That's what we were doing. And we were there from 70 AD all the way towards the Renaissance. We, were, we set up those empires as we went forth and conquered all of Europe. That was us, the kings and the queens, because those were black kings and queens. When you read about Constantine the Great and his mother Helena, black. Wait, let me see if I got a picture. Read, read, I'm just gonna find a picture. Fleeing from Roman persecution and slavery, the slave markets were full of black Jewish slaves. All right. What the bishop is going into, let's go to Luke 21. All right, going into 70 AD, when our people fled into Africa. I'm going to read this. Luke chapter 21 and verse 21. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let them which are in the midst of it depart out, and let not them that are in the countries enter into. For these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. All right. So when we get to the book of Hebrews, that's what he was prophesying of 70 AD. All right. Let's go to the book of Deuteronomy 28 real quick. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 25. Let me look at it real quick. Right. All right. Let's read this. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 25. It says, the Lord shall cause thee to be smitten before thine enemies. Thou shalt go out one way against them and flee seven ways before them. 
and shalt be removed into all of the kingdoms of the earth. That's what the bishop's going over in Babylon and 10 book 2. It shows how we what? We're moved into all of the various kingdoms of the earth. All right, let's go back to Hebrews. Obviously, you have something? All right. You said 22 and 18. 22 and 18. Just another precept. They say the same thing. All right. So we just stall it. Isaiah chapter 22 and verse 18. 18. He will surely violently turn and toss thee like a ball right. into a large country. Into a large country. country, Because like I said, we would spread into seven different ways. Go to um, Deuteronomy 4 and 27. All right. Because we're going into that scattering. Because when we left out of the land of Jerusalem during 70 AD, we went into lots of countries. Not only did we go into Africa, we went other places as well. Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 27. Uh-huh. And the Lord shall scatter you among the nations, uh -huh. and ye shall be left few in number among the heathen. Among, where the, go ahead. Among the heathen, uh -huh. whither the Lord shall lead you. Wherever the Lord led us, we will be left. Huh? All right. So that's why when you go into the New Testament, uh, you got Paul, you got the apostles that go into these different cities where we had little remnants, little remnants of our people. He wrote to the Corinthians. He wrote to the Galatians. He wrote to the Ephesians. All of us that were scattered, those little remnants. What was you going on, sir? i read for you. Okay. I'm sorry. Um, we were going into um, scattered. We, and I think you were going somewhere in the New Testament. Okay. We're, going over being we're just scattered. going back to Hebrews 11. Yeah, that's what you said. Hebrews, Hebrews 11. Gotcha. What do you want me to read from? We started verse 14 again. All right. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 14. For they that say such things... Declare plainly that they seek a country. That they seek a country. Read on. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from which they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. Uh huh. But now they desire a better country that is an heavenly. Uh huh. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath prepared for them a city for he hath prepared for them a city bishop was going over a topic early with the sisters all right this is going into that sister who is not at ease all right give me jeremiah 31 real quick all right um jeremiah 31 and 22 showing what with this um the video the clip that the bishop showed earlier about women's women's rights or the women's movement that's a new thing on the earth that goes against uh seeking a heavenly country read that Jeremiah chapter 31 and verse 22. Uh -huh. How long wilt thou go about, O thy backsliding daughter? For the Lord hath created a new thing in the earth. He created a what? A new thing in the earth. Uh -huh. A woman shall compass a man. A woman shall compass a man. Now, that goes against what? That's going against Hebrews 11. Because as long as our sisters have that mindset, they're doing nothing but what? Let's go to Sirach. Maintaining the estate of this world. Right. That's all they're doing. That's what you want. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sirach chapter 38 and verse 34. Yep. But they will maintain the state of the world. Uh-huh. And all their desire is in the work of their craft. And all their desire is in the work of their craft. Meaning what? They just want to build up America. They want to go to work. They want to be number one businesswoman. But they don't want to look out for the black man. They don't give a damn about their people. They just care about what? Staying here. This is their rest. All right. I got something. Go to uh second Ezra chapter two and verse thirty-six. And this ties in with what uh Bishop was going over about fleeing this world and delivering your soul. All right, read that. This is the book of Second Ezra, chapter two and verse thirty six. Matter of fact, start at thirty five. Verse thirty five. Be ready to reward excuse me. Be ready to the reward of the kingdom. Read. For the everlasting light shall shine upon you forevermore. Right, that everlasting light. Going over to what the uh, officer brought out in Isaiah. Now, how bright that sun and that moon is going to be. Read. Flee the shadow of this world. What you got to do? Flee the shadow of this world. The same thing we read in Revelation. The same thing we read in Jeremiah. We got to flee the shadow of this world. Read. Receive the joyfulness of your glory. Uh -huh. I testify my Savior openly. All right, Bishop, you ready? Yeah, so I wanted to show this because I made a statement. I said, when you read about Constantine the Great and his mama Helena, you're reading about a black man and a black woman. 
Now, here's a book called Russian Icons. Now, I got this was one cover that they had online, but there's some other photos I want to show that's in the book. Some are not in the book, but I'll put it in there anyway. Go ahead. That's Boris and Gleb, the first two on the cover. There were two kings. This one is an exhibition at the Chrysler Museum, Icons from Byzantium of Russia. Go ahead. These are the kings, and you got Mary in the middle with Christ. Go ahead. This is Constantine. That's his mother, Helen. Now, you, get a white boy and white girl out of that. Look at the, the wrap or the, the veil behind Helena's head. It's white, right? Look at her skin. This is clearly a black man and black woman. This is mother and son. Okay? Next. And yes, Constantine was wicked as hell. Ain't nobody saying he was holy and righteous. I know somebody gets simple. Didn't they do the council of nice? Yeah, they did all that. And they was wicked. Go ahead. Uh, these were the three princes of Russia. Look at it. All black. Black men. Look at that. Next. This is uh, the resurrection of Lazarus. Can you zoom in on that? Can you zoom in? Look at that. And you get books that say, oh, there was a fire. That's why his skin is so dark. So how come the fire didn't touch the white clothes? Around the wraps around the head, or that's the halos around the head, huh? Or the sky up there. How come the fire skipped all that, you bunch of liars? Next one. Zoom in on that one. Zoom in. Look at that. There's Christ in the center, two black angels on either side of him. You got Mary down at the bottom, and you got the apostles around. Okay, with two angels in the center, even at the bottom, wearing white. Okay. The, oh, this was uh, in Acts 1. Remember, the angel said, why stand you gazing up? That's what it's going into. It said he was taken up into a cloud. Can you read that for us? Leave that picture right there on the screen. Is this, that picture on the screen? On Periscope? Okay, leave that picture right there while he reads the verse. This is the book of Acts, chapter 1 and verse 9. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. See that? He was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. So you see the two angels there, there and they have Christ in the center being taken up. Go ahead. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. You see that? Two men. I want y'all to see the two men stood there in white apparel. Do y'all see that? Do y'all see that? Okay, don't let me think I'm talking to myself. Two men stood. Read it again. <laughs> Verse 10. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. Verse 10. Which also said, ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. So those two men, you see they got uh, two angels dressed in white. They said, why stand you here gazing into heaven? This same Jesus shall return in like manner. Wow, that's some heavy stuff. Right? See how our forefathers painted this? You ain't got no white boy out of that. Ain't no white people in the picture nowhere. So we have a great history. You got Edomites talking about joke, trying to joke when we was Kangs, K A N G Z. No, no, no. We are kings. That's right. <laughs> Give me the next slide. Okay, let me look at that. Zoom in so I can see. Okay, you got, I believe that's Christ in the center. You got the Father on top. I'm, I'm guessing that's the Father on top with two angels on either side. Can we zoom in on the Father in the middle? Go up. Yeah, because I see Mary above. The baby, the young one there, and at the very top, above Mary, is an older man in garment. Okay, y'all see that? Okay, next picture. This is the crucifixion. Once again, they said, oh, there was a fire. That's why his skin looks like it was burned. So what happened to the loincloth? How come the loincloth didn't get burned, you devils? Black. 
Give me the next one, if there was. Oh, that might have been it. That was it? Okay, all praises. All right, so now why did we go there? I can't remember my thought. Y'all bear with me a second. It was in Hebrews about the new heavenly kingdom. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, let me see what time it is. All right, it's 11. Bear with me. I'm, I'm, I'm be, I ain't going to be too long. I want you to know, don't be shocked seeing Esau come against our people. And what I mean by that is, um, yes, they are trying to militarize the police more and more. And all, a lot of these things they're using is to come against our people. Give me Hosea 5.15. I do want to start there. Us that know the truth, it's going to hurt us when we see them come against our people. It does hurt. But we should be aware of what the Lord says. Read that. This is the book of Hosea, chapter 5 and verse 15. I will go and return to my place till they acknowledge their offense and seek my face and their affliction. They will seek me early in their affliction. They shall seek me early. So the Lord is letting all of us know our people, the Israelites must be afflicted for them to turn to the Lord. Because here in Babylon, a lot of our people live fairly well. Okay. And then they're, they're saying, who's God? What God? What's that by? They don't want to hear nothing. So they have to be afflicted. That's what the scripture, that's what the prophecy is saying. So don't fall out. Don't lose hope. It's going to happen. Now give me Matthew 24, 9 and 10. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 24 and verse 9. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. So some of us in this truth are going to be delivered up to be afflicted. And some of us will lose our lives in this truth. Some of, not all, but some. Go ahead. And ye shall be hated of all nations. The Bible says there's going to come a point. All nations already hate us. But they're really going to hate us as this truth comes out. Go ahead. And ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended. And many Israelites shall be offended. Go ahead. And shall betray one another. What they're going to do? Betray one another. Many offended Israelites in this truth will betray one another. And we're seeing that now. Go ahead. And shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall arise. That's all I want. From there, give me First Timothy 4. I want to deal with the part that says many shall be offended and shall betray one another. First Timothy 4, the Apostle Paul addresses that very same thing. Go ahead. This is the book of 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 1. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith. We're seeing brothers and some sisters depart from the faith. Go ahead. Giving heed to seducing spirits. Giving heed to the white man. That's what we're going. Giving heed to the white man. Because the white man is that seducing spirit. Go ahead. And doctrines of devils. And his philosophies are doctrines of devils. Which goes back to the beginning of the lesson, where it's said that the wicked are estranged from the womb speaking lies. They are like the poisonous uh, adder, poisonous serpent. That's what's going on. To read that again. Verse 1. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits. Giving heed to seducing spirits. And doctrines of devils. And doctrines of the white man. Doctrines of devils. Particularly Christianity. We have had brothers, low ranking brothers, there haven't been no high ranking, low down and out brothers, so disgruntled with the word of God. Leave this faith and join with the enemy who has been oppressing us for centuries. And we're seeing it. Okay, read. Verse 2 Speaking lies and hypocrisy. They'll have a Bible in their hand that says that we're the Israelites and say, We're not the Israelites. We're Hamites. Uh, we don't got to keep Passover, keep Easter. We don't have to celebrate Hanukkah, celebrate uh, Christmas. That's what they're doing. All, we're all one in Jesus. They went right back to 1 Maccabees 1, verse 41. They have given heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. I'm talking about black men and black women who have been offended in this truth and have betrayed us and have... And are hating us. We're living it now. So I'm not shocked. Are you shocked? No, sir. You brothers and sisters online, don't be shocked. They were set up that way from the beginning. 
Okay. Read on. Having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Their conscience is seared with a hot iron. When you when you iron in your clothes and you leave the iron on for too long and it burns that iron mark, you can't get that iron mark out. You can use all the tide you want. That burn iron stain is going to stay right there. The shirt is good for nothing. The shirt, the outfit is good for just throw it. All you can do is throw it in the garbage. So Christ is saying through Paul, these offended Israelites that betray one another and hate one another, their conscience is seared like a what? With a hot iron. That hot iron goes back to the bottom of verse 1. And doctrines of devils. The doctrines of devils have burned in their spirit like a hot iron. They got white Jesus on the brain, Christmas on the brain, one nation on their brain. Everybody's the same on their brain. They're good for nothing now. It's seared there. There's nothing you or I can do to unbrainwash them. We can't do it. Read on. Verse 3. Forbidding to marry and commanding. Now, in, in case you didn't know, because I used the term, I said Christianity is a doctrine of devils. Roman Catholicism is a doctrine of devils. It falls under Christianity. In case you had any doubt that that's what it's talking about, Paul prophesies and gives you an example of a doctrine of devils. Read again. Forbidding to marry. What religion, what Christian religion forbids men to marry? It's called Roman Catholicism. Examine their pope. Examine their priests. Their pontiffs, or whatever they call. They say they're not allowed to marry. Read. And commanding to abstain from meats. What Christian religion abstains to eat meats on Friday? They say today is Friday or Good Friday. Abstain. You can only eat fish. You cannot eat meat. That's what they say. Go ahead. Which God has created to be received with thanksgiving. Which God has created to be received with thanksgiving. Now, you get the dumb Christian that says, that means you can eat pork. Shrimp, whatever you want. That's not what that means. As we read on, read that part again that you just read. Which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving. Watch this. Read. Of them which believe and know the truth. Give me a priest of one of you brothers here on the truth. Of them which believe and know the truth. In the back. Because there may be a dumb Christian online right now. Now, when I say dumb, I'm not trying to be insulting Christian. I, I, I was I was just like you. Uh, first John, no, not first John, but uh, John seventeen seventeen, sanctify them in our truth. Nope, not yet. We don't want that one yet. That's later on. We'll get that one. I want the truth. Remember, the precept said of them which believe and know the truth. So you want a precept that uses the word truth in it. Shalom, Bishop, uh, Shalom. Brother Antelis, uh, Psalms 119 and 142. Yes, can we read that, please? This is the book of Psalms, chapter 119 and verse 142. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. And thy law is the truth. Thy law is the truth. Thy law is the truth. So when we go back to Timothy, chapter 4, read that verse. What verse was that? Verse 3. Forbidding to marry and commanded to abstain from meats which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth and know the law and know the law and know the law Christians have been forbidden to learn the law in your modern day churches they say God's law is done away with that's why you get those dumb uh, private interpretations oh so this means we can eat whatever we want pork, shrimp, cat, crab, possum Turtle, go ahead. Verse 4, for every creature of God. Here we go. For every creature of God. Is good. Is good. And nothing to be refused. Uh -huh. If it be received with thanksgiving. Uh -huh. For it is sanctified by the word of God. For it is sanctified by the word of God. Now you can go to the scripture you pulled. Give me the scripture you pulled. John chapter 17 and verse 17. The word sanctified, write this down. The word sanctified means made clean. Go ahead. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. So what is that saying? Sanctify them. Make them clean through your law. Sanctify them through your laws. That's what it's saying. Okay. 
That's why you need the, give me that Matthew 4, where Christ said uh, all scriptures. You know what I want. Matthew 4 and 4, I think it is. Let me hear it. Matthew chapter 4, verse 4. But he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. You hear what Christ said? You got to live by every word. Was the New Testament written when Christ walked to earth? No. So everything he was saying was based on Old Testament scriptures. You know Christians ain't figured that out yet? Christians, modern day Christians, have not figured that out yet. So Christ said we must live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. That means everything the Old Testament said, follow it. So when it talks about Deuteronomy uh, 14, which foods to eat, Leviticus 11, which foods not to eat, we got to follow that. So don't now jump to 1 Timothy 4. And, oh, we can forget Leviticus 11. We can eat pork. Forget Deuteronomy 14. Forget everything the law says. We can do what we want. See, that's a doctrine of devils. That's what that is. So now, from there, give me, we'll close out here, Revelation 12, 11. We're going to close out. Revelation 12, let's start at 11. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 12 and verse 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto death. Now y'all see that part where it says, and by the word of their testimony. You ever notice in church, everybody always got to jump up and tell a testimony? I got to testify. I got to tell you my testimony. Listen, that's not what this is talking about. Give me the precept for that. I think it's Psalms. I want Psalms, I think it's 132. And what verse? And verse 11. Psalms 132, verse 11. This is going to explain the testimony that we all have, must have. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 132. Well, I know some of you women that just came out of the Christian church. You always want to jump up and tell somebody your testimony. That's not what's going to make you to overcome. Because the same people, listen to what I'm about to say. The brothers that leave and join the devil white man, they too had a testimony of what brought them in. Now they're lying and say, oh, I'm, I'm leaving that. Now, now they disgruntled against the word of God. So your testimony, your personal testimony don't mean nothing to the Lord. The testimony we all must have is the testimony God gives us. Read that. Psalms chapter 130, 132 and verse 12. If thy children will keep my covenant and my testimony. What? And my testimony. Read that again. If thy children will keep my covenant and my testimony that I shall teach them. You see that? Keep the testimony, God's testimony that he teaches us. Not our own personal testimonies. That don't mean nothing. The Lord says, keep the testimony that I will teach you. Read that again. If thy children will keep my covenant and my testimony that I shall teach them, their children shall also sit upon thy throne forevermore. Thy children shall also sit upon thy throne forevermore. Go ahead. For the Lord hath chosen Zion. Wait, wait, wait. wait. I want to start at 11. Why did we start at 11? Verse 11. The Lord hath sworn in truth unto David. He will not turn from it. Let's see what he's talking about. Of the fruit of thy body will I set upon thy throne. Of the fruit of thy body. What is that talking about, brothers? What is the fruit of David's body? Sperm. So he's telling you he's going to bring Messiah through the sperm of David. Then he says, what? If thy children will keep my covenant. Keep my covenant, the Lord says. And my testimony. That I shall teach them. And he just taught us that he's going to send Messiah through David. Go ahead. Their children shall also sit upon thy throne forevermore. Thy children also will sit upon thy throne forevermore. So let's go back to Revelation. This is the book of Revelation chapter 12 and verse 11. <laughs> and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. So the word of their testimony is the testimony the Lord teach us, has taught us. I'm going to say it again. 
Our testimony is the testimony God has taught us that he would raise a king through the fruit of the body of David. That is the testimony we must have. Not whether I was walking down the street 10 times a week. Huh? What's the song go? I was walking down the street 10 times a week. That's old school, Bishop. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> Dag, nobody know what I'm talking about. Anyway, we always got some old testimony of what brought me into the truth, how I came into this. But you know what? Why it don't mean nothing? Because the second you get mad, because you got judged, whether it was for adultery, lying, or stealing, you get mad and leave the truth. So your testimony, our personal testimonies don't, don't carry weight with God. He wants us to speak his testimony that he has taught us. That carries weight. Go ahead. And they loved not their lives unto death. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath. Why? Because he knoweth that he have but a short time. These white scholars, their job is to study scripture. Their job, I'm going to say it again, their job is to study scripture. Study us and see exactly what point in time are we at. That's how they know they got a short time. I hope you understand what I'm saying. Go ahead. Verse 13. And when the dragon saw that he was cast into the earth. When a white man saw that he was cast into the earth. He persecuted the woman. The woman is talking about is the nation of Israel. Jeremiah 6 and 2 explains that Israel is uh, counted as a beautiful and comely woman. Go ahead. Which brought forth the man child. Because the man child is Christ. It came from the nation of Israel. Read. And to the women were given. And to the woman. I'm sorry. And to the woman were given two wings. Of a great eagle. A great escape. Go ahead. That she might fly into the wilderness. Uh -huh. And to her place. That place. The wilderness was Africa. The place is America. Where she is nourished. Where we have been nourished. For a time. Uh -huh. And times. And a half a time. Write this down. 350 years. From the face of the serpent. From the face of the serpent. Now. In case you doubt that that's what it's talking about. Somebody says. Well how do you know. What does it mean when it says that we would be nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent? Now, remember, it went, it's calling him the dragon. Verse 9. Look at verse 9. Read verse 9 again. Verse 9. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. Now, I know you like to think that, that um, the spiritual demon Satan is on his own deceiving the whole world the spiritual demon satan has a nation that he works with a hundred percent and it's called esau the nation of edom that nation has been the ones that has deceived the whole world now jump down to verse 14 again verse 14 and the two women were given two and wings to the woman excuse me and to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness and to her place where she is nourished for a time for a time and times mm -hmm. and a half and half a time from the face of the serpent now here's my question here's my question we just read in revelation that we would be nourished from the face of the serpent what precept that uses easier words explains this because i always tell you you cannot read Revelation if you have not read the Old Testament. What scripture in the Old Testament says we would be nourished from the face of the serpent? Yes, right here. Uh, Deuteronomy 28, 48. Right. Let's read that. Deuteronomy 28, verse 48. Now watch the wording. Watch the words. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 48. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies. Notice it uses the word enemies in place of serpent. Go ahead. Which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger. If you want to be nourished with food, you must go to your enemy. Go ahead. And in thirst. If you want to be nourished with thirst, you must go to your enemies. Go ahead. And in nakedness. If you want to be nourished with clothing, you must go to your enemies. 
and in want of all things. If you want anything, including education, you must be nourished from your enemies. Go ahead. But and he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. Now let's go back to Revelation 12. Now we got the thought together. Revelations chapter 12 and verse 14. 14. And to the woman, which is the nation of Israel, were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness. We fled into Africa when Rome was chasing us down. Go ahead. Into her place. And from Africa, we went into her place, which is Babylon the Great here. Go ahead. Where she is nourished for a time. Where she is nourished. Go ahead. For a time. And times. Uh -huh. And half a time. From who? From the face of the serpent. From the face of the serpent. So our enemies of Deuteronomy 28 is called the serpent here in Revelation 12. I hope you all understand that. Read on. And the serpent cast out of his mouth the water as a flood. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood. The mouth of this serpent is called the media. I'm going to say it again. The mouth of this serpent is called the media. His television, his newspapers, his magazines, that's his mouth. Because with your mouth, you do what, brothers? Communicate. You communicate. You send messages. They do it through their media. Go ahead. After the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. So what is this water as a flood that comes out of their media? Hebrews 13, 9, please. Hebrews 13, 9 explains what's going to carry us, what would carry us away. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 9. Be not carried away about with divers and strange doctrines. Divers and strange doctrines. Go ahead. For it is a good thing that the heart be established with grace. With the mercy of God. So the flood is the divers and strange doctrines. That's what it's talking about. Let's go back. Verse, I'm sorry, Revelations chapter 12 and verse 15. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood. Divers doctrines. After the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. That he might cause Israel to be carried away of divers doctrines. Go ahead. And the earth helped the woman. The earth helped the woman. Psalms 85, 11 explains the earth. We're this, almost done. This is the books of Psalms, chapter 85 and verse 11. 85 and verse 11. Truth shall spring out of the earth. Truth shall spring out of the earth. What does truth translate to, brothers? Law. God's laws shall spring out of the earth. Go back to Revelation. Revelation, chapter 12 and verse 11. 15, 16. 16, and the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood, which the dragon cast out of his mouth. So when you watch the media, which is the dragon's mouth, and it, the flood comes out of same-sex relations is good with God, the earth will open its mouth. You open up this Bible and say, no, Leviticus 20, 13 says, man shall not lay down with mankind as, it, as you do with woman. When, it, when the media says, give me another example, you can, I just said that. Um, tattoos. You show all the athletes with tattoos everywhere. That's the new thing. They got shows, ink, ink this, ink that. You go, no, Leviticus 19 says not to print any mark on your flesh. Okay? Uh, another doctrine. Maybe God is a woman. Really? Exodus 15 and 3 says the Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. This Bible will swallow up every lie that comes from the mouth of the serpent. You have to use this Bible. Read verse 16. 16. And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood, which the dragon cast out of his mouth. They say Jesus is white through their media. They say no, Revelation chapter 1. The Bible's going to open its mouth and swallow that lie up. Oh, the Israelites are white. The Bible opens his mouth and swallows that lie. The angels are white. The Bible opens his mouth and says the living creatures look like burning coals of fire. Oh, shoot. Every lie that I put out, 
you niggas with that Bible, it swallows it up. That's what it's talking about. Go ahead. And the dragon was wroth with the woman. And this white man is angry with us. Listen good. Don't think it's a coincidence they set up the black, what is it called? Identity. The identity extremists. Extremist. Oh, no, all that's set up to come down against this truth, to shut us down. Watch. Just bear, mark my words. Read it again. And the dragon was wroth with the woman. You got to watch this. You got something called the Southern Poverty Law Center. They got us listed as a hate group. But the white boy who killed 17 people, what was the name of his group? Uh, Anybody remember? I got to find it. They just posted it. Something Florida, something Florida. Bear with me a second. Mm. Bear, oh, here it goes. Uh, the white supremacist group, Republic of Florida, ROF, the Republic of Florida. That's the white supremacist group. That devil killed 17 people, and guess what? They're not on the Southern Poverty Law Center's hate list. There's no listing of them. But they got Israel United in Christ. Are you kidding me? You think that's by coincidence? No, oh, no, that's by design. So that our people will go, no, no, you better not join them. That's a hate group. That, we're not a, we have killed nobody. We have murdered no one. We have lynched no one. Never have. But yet we're listed there. Anything that uplifts the black man and black woman is denounced as a hate group. Anything that tries to unite our people is denounced as a hate group. Figure that one out. Read that again, Revelation 12 and 17. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed. We today are the remnant of her seed. Go ahead. Which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. That's their focus. The Bible is telling you that the dragon has their focus on those Israelites that keep the commandments of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. They're not so much worried about Black Lives Matter. No, that's just side piece. They're not worried about the nation of Islam. They're not worried about the, the new Black Panther Party. The Bible says they went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus. So they're not even focused on those Israelites that don't believe in Christ. Because you know you got Israelites that say, we New Testament only. They're not focused on them. Because there's no power there. But them that keep the commandments and believe in Christ, them's the dangerous ones. That's the one the Lord coming back to fight for. 